Hey guys, this week's podcast is brought to you by WWE 2K15, the video game so real you'll feel it. Available now for PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, and Xbox One. WWE 2K15 features superstars who've been on this very podcast like Cesaro, Daniel Bryan, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Go grab yourself a copy today, enjoy it, but for now, enjoy the show. This is the Art of Wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds and souls, the hearts and the lives of people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I am a Chicago native. I'm a podcaster with my friends. I'm a personality. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler. And we are sitting here live in the studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is a fan-supported and listener-supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCabana.com, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support. Rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend via social media or via email or via mouth or via however you got to do it. A text message? That's fine. Or if you got a couple of bucks in your pocket, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the opening, head on over to Colt Merch.com and digitalcult.com, t-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, digital downloads, and much more. Episodes 1 through 35. It's all over there at coltmerch.com and digitalcult.com. All right, obviously you see who the guest is. CM Punk joins the podcast, and it's not like a casual talk with my friend CM Punk. This is it, man. This is all that he's wanted to get off his chest, and he now has the opportunity to do it in a safe place with his friend in his own house on a podcast that he trusts has no alternative motives or anything. So this is pretty cool. Uh, Hopefully you guys... Give it a real in-depth listen. You hear it. You hear the story. You hear the struggle. You hear the heartache. There's so much to it. There is a person that goes there with real lives and real feelings. All right, let's hit a couple bullet points before we jump into it. I don't want to talk too much. I know you guys are anticipating what he has to say. Uh, He mentions it right off the bat, though. This is absolutely free, and I don't mean to get into your mind or anything, but the reality is is that somebody would have paid him a lot of money, and then somebody would have put it up on the sites, and everybody would have illegally downloaded it for free, and hopefully you felt kind of like a a piece of shit for illegally downloading it. Nate Glass at Takedown Piracy would have had to do a lot of work because he's the best, and he's great at that but no it's just free it's there for you the idea is to get as many ears as possible to hear this to understand what this man was going through and why the decisions were made and the real surprise at the end which i don't think anyone ever saw coming and is kind of a nice twist at the end of all of this very surprising for a lot of you for for a lot of you i would assume So this is free. Great ways that you could support again. I have all new merchandise up for Black Friday or the holidays or whatever. I finally have some beanies. I have some zip-up hoodies. I've got brand new shirts up. Dave Bogart over there in New York designed a Billy Goat's Curse shirt. Very cool. The Wrestling Road Diaries, speaking of illegal downloads, is up for a digital download at digitalcult.com. A lot of you people have been asking for it. You can watch it on your holiday trips. Give that a download, a little cheaper than the DVD itself. But these are great ways to support this free, awesome thing that I uh, am giving to you and uh, obviously that CM Punk is giving to you. And also, Punk is going to put up a pro wrestling tease store, I think, coming up this Sunday, which hits another thing. Uh, Obviously... You know, I I don't think he needs the money, but he put in all the years and all the time, and I think he deserves the money as as opposed to all the bootleggers out there. And I hope you feel upset about yourself that you're taken from somebody or something that you did not create. So this gives him an opportunity to put the power in his own hands a little bit, and you can directly support your favorite star at ProWrestlingTees.com. A lot of you guys, maybe this is the first time that you've ever listened. I understand. I had to do the same speech over at the old Stone Cold episode and a couple other ones that I've done. There's a variety of different shows. These shows are done with my friends. We hang out. We talk about wrestling. They go in many different directions. There's fun ones, like the ones I've done with Cliff Compton, the ones I've done with Luke Gallows, Sanjay Dutt and I, we have fun, the Briscoe Brothers. There's inspirational ones. Uh, And then there's deep ones, you know, Tommaso Ciampa had a pretty deep one. 
Adrian Neville, when he was Pac, he came on here and really talked about his insecurities and his concern about going on to future platforms. Essentially, that meant WWE, and now we see how great he's doing. And then there's one like this, where Punk kind of tells the whole story. So I invite you to listen to the ones that you like. Go down, look at the list. There's over 226 of them. I've been doing this for over four years, every single week since 2010. The longest-running wrestler-to-wrestler podcast uh, in existence, I would say. I dare anybody to challenge me on that one. I'm very proud of the podcast. I am not competing with anybody else. I am just spreading my word, spreading my message through audio downloads. I enjoy doing it for you. I enjoy doing it for myself. And I enjoy giving the opportunity for my friends to get everything they need to off their chest if they need to. Now, now we're going to go into this and we're also going to do another podcast next week with Punk because we wanted to give you the surprise first. And if there's anything we're missing, you send an email to aowpunk at mail.com. Did you get that? aowpunk at mail.com. Listen to the whole thing, and then I'll talk about it a little bit at the end, what I'm thinking you should be sending. But it's deep, it's long, it's informative, and it might change everybody's mind or not. I don't know. Depends what kind of person you are. I hope you're a good person, considering you're listening to this podcast. A different podcast, I'd like to think, from all the other ones. All right. Song of the Week this week is brought to you by WWE 2K15. WWE Video Games is sponsoring this little independent wrestling podcast that could. Feel free to make yourself a Colt Boom Boom Cabana with a headband and a jacket and wrist tape that I stole from WWE five years ago. Go make an Officer Colt Cabana. Go make a Matt Classic. Make anyone. Make yourself as a WWE rookie and take him from an indie darling at NXT all the way to WrestleMania. Something cool this year is the 2k showcase you can relive some of the great feuds throughout the years told through your gameplay cinematic cutscenes, and historic footage featuring triple h versus Shawn michaels and john cena versus cm punk they're all in there all your favorite superstars from today and the past including john cena brock lesnar the rock stone cold steve austin it's available now for ps3 xbox 360 ps4 and xbox one WWE 2K15, so real, you'll feel it. For the newbies here, the song of the week is something to do with wrestling. It's either a song about wrestling, completely about wrestling, or by a wrestler. One of the best groups doing this genre is a group called Anti-Scene. They've had a bunch of gems on here before, but this is one I have not played before. It's called Dear Abby. It's about Abdul the Butcher. I think you'll dig it. Enjoy it right now, and then we'll be back with CM Punk. Hey, bud. Okay. Yeah, you haven't been on since number two. <laughs> really? That's not true. Officially. Oh, okay. Right? I mean, I... I you weren't I, a guest a Guest as a... Is this the second, only the second time I've been an official sure. guest? How long is this going to be? How long do I have? So, here's... Here's uh, going into this whole thing right now. This is kind of what I. Uh, this is a special episode. Well, it, yeah, it is. And I, like right away, I wanted to kind of like if we get if we do if if you do your business, yeah, in twenty minutes, and then it's twenty minutes. It's not. It's not a twenty minutes. If it's an hour and a half, <laughs> uh, you know, if it, I like, there is no, and that's the beauty of. Um, we have created our own landscape, and there is no... You don't have eight segments tonight, well, This punk. is why I'm using you <laughs> as a platform to, I guess, speak for the first time. Yeah. 
which sounds weird. I feel like there's all this bizarre pressure on me. Um, no, but you had okay. So you had the idea, and I, I agree. This is a pretty good idea because I don't want this to. Uh, I don't want this to be a, a shoot interview. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody would have paid me handsomely for this story, but that's not that's not what it's about. Money's not everything, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be a big. Uh, a big, a big theme yeah. in my story. So um, I'm going to uh, talk uh, as openly as I, I, I wish to about the circumstances uh, of, of, of me leaving WWE, right? And then if anybody has any questions based on that subject, right. don't ask me how big Batista's dick is. <laughs> Um, we'll set up what an email. Or- yeah. So I mean, the theme is uh, right. You know, the theme of the podcast, of course, is our lives, and this is a big life thing. Yeah. And you had come to me, and we had kind of been talking about like, you know, who knows if you ever want to talk, but there's just so much going on, and and it's understandable. You've been so great about not exploding. Uh, verbally into the world of how much frustration you probably could have exploded and you really you were good about sure. keeping it into yourself well i i think a lifetime of watching people uh either talk about stuff when they shouldn't talk about stuff or cryptically talk about stuff you know like even if it's something as light as oh, i got this really big awesome thing coming and you'll know more about it later right. and then if something falls through and then you're just the asshole who just tweeted something about this big awesome thing and I never want to be that guy. So there are large, large periods of me going dark on Twitter uh, and then, you know, tweeting about hockey and then reading some responses and then being reminded why I went dark on Twitter yeah, yeah. in the first place. Uh, but, you know, fuck it. Um, well, so you, you came. Sorry, that was the worst of, as a host to say that. But I just I wanted to say, like, we were like, uh, you know, you were like, should we should we do questions? How should I do this? And mm-hmm. I get it because you. You don't want to go into this. There's so much to come off, and you don't want to miss saying anything. So I, I think the plan we came up with is let's do one that like they won't know until it comes up, which I, right. which I love about the idea is that you ne- when you subscribe to the podcast, you never know who's going to come up. Yeah, and we, we weren't going to announce, right. guess what? I'm doing uh, Art of Wrestling. Right. Hey! So yeah. Punk pops up, and they're like, holy fuck. We talk about it. We, you get off what you need to get off off of your chest, and then like if you if people feel like, no, because there's so many people... They, you know, if so many people write, they want to know, or they're so confused, and, and they don't, they do have the right, they don't have the right, I don't know, mm-hmm. and so that's what next week will be, is we'll, well kind we can, of, we can, we can get into that it. with the email, and then also saying, like, so I'm obviously biased, you know, I'm on Team Punk forever, right. um, so I'm going to do my best. <laughs> I was about to make an awful, awful World War II Ger- oh. <laughs> Germany joke, Jeez. but what if, I am, no, yeah. never mind, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I am loyal, no, okay. I don't care. <laughs> Um, I, you know, I guess I, I, I don't know. My job is to kind of maybe I'm going to play a, another side of the sword, or I might. Hey, if you fucking disagree with me on right. anything, you know, please let me know. I'm not disagree, but I'm here to bring up. Maybe that's my job here. I don't know. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. if that comes up, I'm that might be part of what I'm going to get into. Okay. So uh, we're rocking. You said fuck it, and I stopped you. I hope I didn't stop your train of thought there. No, I, I don't. I don't honestly know exactly where. To begin, because mm-hmm. um, I could I could go back and probably start at uh, you know when I resigned, you know when I was out the door and I had my mind made up and I wasn't going to resign, and then you know I had this this meeting with with Vince and I, I wouldn't say he convinced me to resign. I would say I talked myself into giving it the old college try, and. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of people believe like all these these powerful words I say about change and changing the place and all that. And uh, people constantly tweet to me all the time. Oh, you know, you can't change it from your couch in Chicago. Right. And I I absolutely disagree because that's exactly what I did. It almost took me sitting on my couch to and not, not change the place um, the per- first permanently. No, no, no. I'm talking like when I split in January. Okay. Uh, I, I, they, they changed everything. And part of me thinks they changed a lot of stuff uh, to spite me. Uh, and that's fine because certain people who deserved certain things at that certain time got those things. And that's something that I never got. And it was nice to see that, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to sound 
uh, you know, like any, like an old timer, like, oh, I paved the way for these guys. That's not what this is about. It's more about just kind of telling uh, my story and how it unfolded and what happened. Uh, and I'm going to try to do it in as a positive and non bitter way as I possibly can. Because, uh, and here's a newsflash for you, ladies and gentlemen it's okay to be bitter about stuff. You have to eventually work through it and get over it, which is something that I have done. Uh, but there are a few uh, bright spots, I'll call them. Uh, there's a few things that still still get me to this day, and they'll probably come out. Uh, I just don't want to sound like that bitter guy. That's why I don't want to have this be a shoot interview. Sure. I don't want it to be, hey, let's just talk shit and bash WWE, you know, because um, whenever they had me backed into a corner, I knew I wasn't the easiest guy to deal with, and I wasn't the nicest guy to deal with, and, you know... Um, I, I yeah I, so so just kind of starting um, I'm 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 honestly having trouble yeah, with well, like the you know bitterness I've came on here and you know I I've I've said it's hard because I've said like yeah fucking uh, I for me bitter a little bit and it drove me to a point and almost like I use bitterness as a happy point. But then I always get pissed off when I see people saying like "fuck Ben, he's a bitter piece of shit." See, you know? that's, and like, that's that's people's perspectives. Right. You know what I mean? Like they people but I'm have owning the bitterness. People have yeah, and and that's the thing. Like I've embraced it. Yeah, and I'm not. That's not all I'm about. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the fucking happiest I've been, and I don't know how. At least three years. Great. Legitimately, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, I I find these other things that have made me happy, and I and I thought this thing that I loved that I thought I loved, uh, it just made me so miserable all the time. It made me miserable. And the, I guess with like the black and the white of it, when you just boil it all down, the essence of it was I was miserable. I was unhappy. Fuck it. I made myself happy. I left. Like that's what it boils down to. So, you know, I, I it, it was a very, um, uh, it, it, it wasn't an easy decision to make, but it was also a long time coming. You know, I, I don't know, uh, this will probably come up in the next episode. People can ask questions and uh, there's a lot of assumption out there. Uh, people that uh, I was disgruntled with my storylines. I was banged up. I was, uh, I was mad that I wasn't, um, the, the main event of WrestleMania. I was, I was mad that I was wrestling triple H. Uh, th- you know, there's a, there's an element of truth in all of those things, but I can't say there was one big thing, uh, that, led to my decision. And actually the big thing that led to my decision was my health. Um, so, I mean, little things like those had been eking at you, your whole, like little decisions of, Oh, that sucks. Oh, this sucks. I mean, that's your whole, your whole career. Like the whole thing's a fight. The whole thing's a fight. Well, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I'm in Boston. I'm talking to Vince about resigning. He says, Oh, we really need you. I'll give you this. I'll give you that. I say, I want this. He says, fine, you can have that. Um, I'd already been approached because, I mean, you got to understand. After I, after I did that promo in Vegas, everyone calls it the pipe bomb, and I like despise that word now because everyone just refers to promos as pipe bombs now. Right. It's very, it's very weird. Yeah. Um, I, and maybe, maybe hell, I should just embrace that and own that too. But I don't know. It feels like douchey. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna drop a pipe bomb. I don't know. Uh, I get it. I'm talking to Vince, and uh, I tell him that since that that promo. Uh, we've gotten more mainstream attention. You know what I mean? Like, like all this stuff. Everyone wanted to interview me, whether it was like GQ magazine, uh, you know, on the cover of USA Today, and like all this weird shit. That's, Jim Rome. Yeah, exactly. Pre- precisely. You're going to remember more than yeah. I do because my life's a blur. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I had legitimate companies approaching me about wanting to just give me money to sponsor me. Because obviously UFC is all the rage and guys wear fight shorts and they have shit all over their shorts and they get paid a ridiculous amount of money to promote uh, these, these companies. So I had uh, a pretty big money deal on the table and I went to Vince and I was like, yeah, so okay, um, this is going to be new CM Punk and uh, when I do things new, I like to kind of, you know, new hairstyle, new, new look. No, really? Yeah, right. New whatever. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Um, uh, maybe I'll switch to fight shorts because then I can have sponsors and these guys are already in place. And I told them my idea, said I wanted to do this sponsorship thing, and I felt like I deserved it. I, I got all these these new eyes on the product, you know, and people were fucking going banana about it. And he says, nope, you can't, can't do that. Um, I, 
you know, I, I, sponsors for Raw would get mad. The other wrestlers would get mad. This is that. We had a conversation. It wasn't my hill to die on, so I let it go. Um, you know, Q, what, a year later, Brock Lesnar comes back, and the motherfucker has sponsors. Jerky links. And, yeah, and uh, that's, you know, and that's good because Brock, Brock got that. Well, I mean, good on him. So, like, yeah, where, good for him. Where yeah. are you? Like, uh, I guess what puts that? Where does that put you mentally? Like, you couldn't win that fight yet. He could win that fight. Well, he had pre-existing sponsors. I know that, and like, and that was part of his deal. He was probably like, "No, I'm coming over. I still have these sponsors. I signed for X amount of years, and I'm going to wear my fight." But there was a and, conversation that was had. Yeah, you lost it. He I won thought. It. I thought in my mind, I was like, "Wow, this is like cutting edge, and this is going to open it up, and it's going to be a new means of income for not just me, for the boys." Because I was still in that mentality that I wanted. To, uh, to help everybody out, you know, and uh, and then you know I didn't get it, and then Brock gets it, and without an explanation from Vince, and you know, of course, when I go to him and I go, hey, that was my idea, I wanted to do that, and Vince always just ha ha ha, yeah, well, you know, uh, and, you know, he he tries to blow smoke up your ass, yeah. but I'm not one of those guys that's going to be like, no, I'm the guy that goes, no, you're blowing smoke up my ass, like what's the difference, you know what I mean? And then if the difference is he's a superstar and I'm not, then let me go. That was always what I said. I said, I'm going to prove to you that I am exactly everything that I say that I am, and I am who I know I can be. I just need the machine to get behind me. And then, boom. You know what I mean? I was the first guy, I, and nobody since has outsold John Cena in merchandise. I did that. You know what I mean? Not... So, I mean, what's the... I'll give you another example. Yeah. Uh, um, hey, uh, I, my friend Chael's fighting in Chicago for UFC, and I already talked to all of them, and they're totally cool with the idea. I'm going to walk them to the Octagon, and tomorrow's the Royal Rumble, so it'll get some last-minute buys. And whether Chael wins or loses, no offense to Chael, nobody's going to be talking about him. They're going to be talking about the WWE champion walking him to the Octagon. Oh, my God, Phil, no, we can't do that. that that's barbaric. Did you? Somebody's going to die. <laughs> and then I had to remind him, well, you know, I don't know if you remember Owen Hart or not, you know, because he sort of died in Wait, your ring. Someone's gonna die. That's what he said. What does he that said. Mean? Some, he said somebody was gonna die in the octagon eventually, and you might be the one that's ringside for. No, it? I just think he that was his. He was he was distancing himself from such a horrible barbaric product. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, and I reminded him like sure. how horrible and barbaric pro wrestling is. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was just like, no. Did, and then he was also appalled. Did you know that they're gonna have women fight in the octagon soon? And I was like, yeah, and it's the fucking coolest thing in the world, and it's going to be the hottest fucking thing you'll see. And, you know, it's another thing. He, like, he's just not in touch. Right. But so then he, you're... So he tells, me I can't, he tells me I can't do that, and I, I felt, damn, you know, like, that, it's such an opportunity for the company. It's just a spotlight. It's more promotion. It's more eyes on the product. It's my hometown. Place would be going crazy for me. And he says no, and then the next day or the next week, Triple H walks Mayweather mm -hmm. to the fucking ring. And I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. I'm learning my lesson. It's easier to ask forgiveness and permission. Next time, I'm not going to ask. Do you, is it a, like, obviously, when you work for a, and it, it just seems to be that this promotion, and maybe, you know, I guess Vince McMahon in his stubborn ways, but uh, when you, you just, you, you get cool shit, and you do cool shit, and that's part of... Uh, is is everybody else finding like is John Cena finding himself like no one's saying I guess that's a bad example no one's saying no to John Cena to ideas that he's bringing to the table but is it everybody but him it's a very creatively stifling toxic environment right. I've gotten and those are just two examples of two cool things I've been offered television shows uh, movies uh, the chance to do uh, stunt work uh, a number of different outside projects, half of which I can't even remember right now because I just, you know, you just move on and I, I, I forget. Right. Um, and I'll add not just you, but I, right? There's a list uh, of There's other a guys. handful of guys. But, and this is the thing. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to turn this into let's bash John Cena either. Okay. I like John. Um, I haven't talked to him since I left, but, y you know, I haven't talked to a lot of people since I left. Um, I've been offered things, and then I go to the office like a good little soldier, and then they tell me I can't do it, and then two weeks later, John Cena's doing it. The same thing, the same exact thing. I'll give you an example. I mean, this is a t internal, but this will this will kind of set the tone. Uh, I was the champ, and this is so maybe two years ago. It was around this time. They wanted, me, oh hey, Triple H comes up to me, hey the 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 studio wants you in a movie, and I was like, oh cool. Um, 
they're they're lame as fuck, but you know what I mean. It might get me like some sort of a credit, and I can you know I, I, it's something to work with. It's a new experience in case I want to pursue acting after uh, my wrestling career. Uh, and I would get house shows off, and like that's right around the time I was like, fuck yeah, house shows off, because I tore my knee up working Cena in September at Night of Champions. Put him in the mood of lock, and he tried to roll to get out of it, and just twisted my knee, twisted his ankle. Uh, so. It's all set. Yeah, it's uh, 12 rounds, too, I think. And, like, I remember talking to you about it, and you're like, no, don't do it. It's just yeah. a John Cena movie. And I was just like, man, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at house shows off. Like, that was my big thing. I was like, I'm still going to be getting paid. I get paid for this movie, and, like, house shows oh, yeah. off. I was like, man, like, you got to make your first movie It's got to be. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah, because I, I came to you because I come do to Marie you. Three citizens on patrol, right? Man, you can't. Although that sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, and it, it, I was supposed to be an EMT, and I was like, they tried to put me in movies before where I flat out refused. They tried to offer me movies when I was trying to resign, and it was a condition of, oh, you can only do this if you resign. And I was like, your movie sucks. Why would I resign for this? You know, um, I'll resign if you can make me Casey Jones in a Ninja, Ninja Turtle movie, <laughs> but. Uh, so I, I agree to do it, and then we're going back and forth. I'm signing these papers, and then Hunter tells me the dates, the shooting schedule, and then I, I go, that's the European tour. And he goes, no, 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 it's not. I said, no. Like, Come on. I've been on uh, like 30 European tours, which means you've probably been on like 90 to 100. It's the same time every year. It's two weeks after WrestleMania, and it's two weeks before Thanksgiving. No, no, I checked. It's, it's good. Hunter, I'm, I'm telling you, it's the European tour. Like, I'm the champ. Does Vince want me to miss that? I'm totally fine with missing a European tour. Fuck yeah. But, and like, that was the thing. When I was the champion, I was, I was very much in like the, I'm, I, I got to lead this locker room and I got to do this and I got to lead them by example. So like, you know, I did every appearance. I did every, I did everything Cena did to put it in, in perspective because people, you know, know how much John does. I did everything he did. They just don't advertise it. I mean, it sounds shitty to complain. Um, I did as many make-a-wishes as he did and they just don't advertise anybody else doing a make-a-wish. Occasionally here and there, you'll be like, oh, Randy Orton did a make-a-wish. Mm -hmm. Everybody does them. They just seen as the poster boy, you know. So let, let, let me play uh, devil's advocate here. Hold oh, hold sorry. your thought and let me just get this out. So I, I I finally Hunter's like it's not the European tour punk, and I'm like, dude, it totally is. But okay, well, all right, let me let me double check and I'll get back to you. The next day, it's announced on the internet: Randy Orton starring in, um, you know, Marine Two, Mar no. whatever. Uh, 12 rounds too 13 rounds yeah so I call up Hunter and I go you couldn't have called me and told me you know and he's like well I told you I was going to try to get him to switch the schedule but they couldn't so you know we just took Randy was the second choice and I was like you, don't you think you could have called me and I didn't have to read it on the internet this, that, and that's that's how they are mm -hmm. uh, so that and that's I mean see, okay so that's a theme because I'm going to play, uh, not Devil's Advocate, but I'm going to play Asshole Who's Complaining to You on Twitter slash okay. Facebook, All whatever. Right. Uh, fuck you. You should be happy. We made you. We gave you millions. I, I see this one. I bought your I house. I bought your house. I bought your house. You owe me explanations for everything. Right? You owe me this. You yep. owe me that. You should be happy that you're just a wrestler. Why are you complaining about, or why would you be mad that you didn't get 12 rounds too? Why, uh, you, oh, so you didn't get a, co a commercial. Blah, blah, blah. How's, uh, am I doing a good job? Is that you're, doing, you're, doing, you're doing a decent job. And I'm, assume, I'm assuming that, yeah, I assume it's going to be 10 times worse now too, even though I'm doing my best to, you know, like, I love my fans and the ones that want an explanation i'm giving it to them mm -hmm. uh, but the ones that were like fuck you and they call me a, the, uh, i get a lot of uh, you're a quieter on twitter because they don't know how to spell twitter <laughs> properly <laughs> it's fucking wild what if i like knew exactly what you're trying and but I was you like, know, oh, yeah quieter makes perfect <laughs> sense <laughs> no i that none of like nothing i do or say is going to make them happy and you know more power to them they have they have the the power to tweet and i have the power to block them and that you know that do you, That's fine. Do you like? Um, do you relate to? I guess I was thinking about this the other day because I was imagining who. Because I mean, you show me these things and then you you block them or whatever. But like, I guess an Amanda Bynes or a Lindsay Lohan or like the people that get these kind of things. Do you think it affects them? Does it affect you? 
a, a very minuscule amount. Uh, I just think there's just so much of it, you know. Uh, and, but and then when and I you, hate when saying you, this because when you, can, you consider the source, and then you go, well, this is nothing anybody would ever say to my face right. in public because they just wouldn't have the fucking balls because I would punch them in the throat, you know. Uh, but it just gets tiresome. You know what I mean? And then, oh, you're a pussy for blocking people. No, I'm not. Twitter's like the fucking open window in my kitchen with somebody yelling in it. Somebody's yelling in it, and I don't want to yell in it. I close the fucking window. Right. Shut the fuck up. It's my house. You didn't buy my fucking house, Apparently motherfucker. They did. Apparently they did. I bought my fucking house. <laughs> you know? Like, that, 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 I think that's like a weird generational thing. Like, that entitlement. Uh, and it's kind of shocking to me. It's like this whole generation that's just grown up with Twitter and everything and like instant gratification. And like, just because you bought my T-shirt, which I appreciate, thank you, mm-hmm. and I got a fraction of, of the money for that, you know, um, like they didn't, they didn't make me who I am. The, uh, WWE didn't make me who I am. I was CM Punk before I got there. And my, it, WWE was a fucking pit stop. And I will not be defined uh, based on what... I do for a living. I don't think anybody should be. What WWE gave you, so here it is, the other side, WWE gave you a platform Mm -hmm. uh, and allowed you to make a lot of money, but then on the flip side, for every dollar you made, they made 14, Uh, Probably way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. And And so for every time someone's yelling at you uh, for whatever, they should be yelling, I guess, at the other one. We're gonna jump around a lot too. Like mm-hmm. you know, uh, when you when you when you get down to the business of it and, and the dollars, um, this is a business, and I know what I'm worth. And WWE's job almost was to undermine what anybody's worth. If somebody is legit, if my true worth was eight million dollars a year, WWE does not want to pay me eight million dollars a year because they still need to profit. So they're going to be like, no, we're going to pay you five hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, and then since it's the only game in town and half the people who work there were kids like myself, like you, who grew up loving it and watching it, um, they eat a lot of shit because, oh, this is my dream job and uh, I don't want to get fired and uh, I don't want to make this person mad and I better shake this person's hand and I better do this and I, I better make sure I do this. And it's it, the, pro wrestling is just the weirdest fucking business in the world. Pro wrestling was awesome when it was me and you and Prazak and Chuck Smooth and we were driving down to, to Ian's and there wasn't all this bullshit and we sat in the locker room and we all, everybody pissed in a community bucket <laughs> and we wrestled for little or no fucking money. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was, that was fucking pro wrestling. Now you try to put that in the confines of a publicly traded company where everybody's like, oh no, I'm a businessman and, and Hunter's running around in suits going, oh you know, I never wanted a real job because I never wanted a suit and haha, <laughs> golly, look at me now. It's just like, it, it's the most bipolar business in the world because they want you to be this character 24-7, but then if you're caught being mean to somebody on Twitter, they will admonish you. Uh, they, it's, just, it's just fucking weird. So the, I, there's an underlying theme of, uh, and what I think is, is, is what we're going to get to, is that uh, for all the money or whatever it is, uh, y- you need to be happy uh, in your life. Yes. Not just you, everybody, right? So why would you want to continue doing something that's making you miserable? Right. Um, and that seems to, it's, it's when you say when we're traveling the roads, that's when it's fun. Hey, when I, when I become the biggest thing in wrestling and now things are getting taken away from me, every time you say no to me, that's a frustration notch. Right in, sure. in your in your badge, and now frustration, frustration, frustration. <laughs> it's a great in your badge and your fucking belt. <laughs> Fuck you, all right. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, had a, I had the most frustrated badge notching <laughs> ever. Um, and yeah, and so yeah, like you want at work, you want to be happy. Yes, and, and that you, that place that place should be the fucking happiest place to work, and that's and they they use that as like this bizarre mind fuck, you know? Oh, just just go out there and have fun. She's like, fuck you, this place sucks. And on top of that, you're not fucking paying me nearly enough to do this fucking shit. You're not. And I don't care anybody out there is like, oh, you made millions. Yeah, I should have made fucking 10. Period. That's the fucking way it is. For how hard I worked and how I was never fucking at home. Yeah. So as you leave, you said mainly for your health. Uh, I mean, that was was a big part of it. But it was also, I knew this network was coming out. And for months... I was asking everybody, hey, so 
WrestleMania is probably like 70 bucks in HD, and now you're selling it for ten ninety nine or nine ninety nine. Don't so, pretend you don't know. I don't. I don't. Know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, and yeah, at the time you had to buy like the six month thing, but I was, I felt like I was the only one asking questions. I had guys like Randy asking me like, hey, what, what happens? And I was like, I don't know. I ask and they just, you know, Vince, <laughs> he just laughs. Well, we haven't figured that out yet. And I was going, shouldn't you think you should figure that out before I work on that pay-per-view so you can pay me accordingly? You know, and again, nobody's asking questions because nobody wants to rock any kind of boat because it's the only game in town. No, because you'll get you you'll get punished. You'll get left off a pay per view. They'll take you off a raw. They'll take you off a house shows, and now you're not making any money. That's that's the way they that's the way they do it. God forbid, like they the WWE doesn't do anything to protect the wrestlers. They do things to protect themselves, and that sounds really harsh. And I stated earlier that I don't want to come off as like bash WWE, but they don't let everybody know that they're doing all these fantastic things for concussions for the boys. They do it so it looks good on them in the public. The NFL is getting fucked in the ass because there is a union for the football players and the union is saying, you need to pay these guys this much money for medical for past injuries for whatever and the nfl is doing it the nfl is paying out the ass Mm -hmm. and vince doesn't want to do that so they put all these things in place like oh look we're doing all this we're doing all that um i got a concussion in the royal rumble it's pretty goddamn obvious i knew i had a concussion everybody knew i had a concussion and they're like we want you to take this test and i was like your test is bullshit i took the test while texting you and listening to my headphones and i quote unquote, passed with flying colors. But then they were like, oh, we want you to go to the ring and run the ropes. And I was like, but I just passed your test. They're like, yeah, but we still think you have a concussion. I was like, so your test is worthless. I'm not going out in the fucking ring like a, a, a two week rookie to run the ropes in front of everybody. Let's just call it now. You know, call it a concussion. And, and, but I was doing this weird stubborn, stubborn thing where I was like, I'm fine, I can work, because that's the way I always been, and that's, the, what's the, that's, that's what they instill in you. Because if I didn't work, I'd get punished. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I never had a break. That's why I talked earlier about, yeah, I'll do your movie, because Weekends Off sounded fucking awesome, and I wouldn't even have had Weekends Off. I would have been doing the movie, but I wouldn't have been throwing myself at the ground. I was beat up. I already needed a knee surgery at that point, but I was the champion. So I was like, got to keep going, got to keep going, got to keep going. And I told Vince that uh, I need this knee fixed. Uh, I'll, I'll do it after I, I drop the, the title to Rock. But I was still actively trying to convince him that dropping the title to Rock was not the right thing to do. Um, or that even if I did that, you know, a three-way with me, John, and Rock was the way to go for WrestleMania. Uh, or... Let me keep the title. I wrestle Taker. I think we counted it out, and it would have been day five hundred uh, as of the title. I mean, there was like a bunch of cool different scenarios, but I digress once again. Don't want this to be a shooter interview. Yeah, this is sorry. about why I left. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you didn't. You, you didn't take any breaks. I, I didn't take any breaks. I, I got, dude. I remember being excited when on a European tour after the WrestleMania where I wrestled uh, Ray, that my elbow every night locked up at like a 45 degree angle on the bus and i would be like i can't i can't move it i can't bend it either 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 direction like but three inches and And i I was like people listening who 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 not do complain but are just like oh can't you just go out there every night it's like this guy can't move his elbow yeah and i would i remember being excited and i i remember telling them like that i can't you know, like we would do these exercises where I would like hold something heavy, like maybe like a hammer and try to like relax my arm to try to like dangle it. And then they would straighten it and then they would tape it. <laughs> and I was wrestling like that, like every night in Europe overseas. And like, so the excitement is like, I might get some surgery. I might get some time off. Yes. <laughs> I was stoked. I was like, I mean, you took me to get the laser eye surgery right after my elbow surgery because I was like, huzzah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to get my eyes fixed too because I have all this time off. I got surgery uh, and then I think I got surgery on, a, it was either 
and I was doing SmackDown, so it was a Wednesday or a Thursday, and then uh, Vince called me like Friday. I was like, "Oh, heard surgery is a success." I said, uh, "Yeah, it's great. I'm gonna you know rehab, and you know I'll I'll be I'll be back before you know it." Well, actually, I'm gonna have him send you some travel right now because I mean, just 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 your elbow hurt. We can have you cut promos. So I was already back on the road after X amount, like five days, four, is, not even four is days. Is there internal pressure from you, yourself? Absolutely. Just being like, you can't say no? Come on, man. No, I wanted to show them that I was the fucking the best at this job, yeah. like easily. Like even with my arm in a sling, I'll go cut promos and nobody's going to be able to fucking touch me. I remember there was a time where you... Um, you like kind of were like bragging, like you got something like, you're like, and I kind of like... If I'm going to come back, it's only TVs, and then I don't have to do any more European shows, and then or like overseas, and then like I'll be happy. And then literally two months later, you're like, ah, I'm doing this next well, one. Well, I think but. that was after I split after the was Mania that? match with Taker. But okay. There was a ton of reasons that happened, too. But I was upset that like you then started going back on these tours, and I knew that would drive you to unhappiness. Like, and it did. Yeah. yeah. I so, mean, I, so, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, I... I get that that elbow surgery, and I'm right back on on television, and I'm right back at it, and uh, I'm I'm scared that I'm going to have a blood clot and die because that's what happened to Chris Candido, and uh, I got the laser eye surgery, and I remember like I remember them when when I was supposed to go back to Birmingham to get cleared before I came back to wrestle for my elbow. One day I was just at TV and it was the same thing. I was just like, oh, I'll just probably cut a promo. And then Michael Hayes comes up to me and he goes, All right, you're working so and so. And I was like, No, I'm not. I just got this laser eye surgery. I don't want anybody fucking up my eyes. And he's like, Well, you know, you really should have told somebody. And I was like, Told him what? My elbow. And he goes, No, I just checked. They said you're cleared. I was like, I haven't even gone to Birmingham to see Dr. Andrews yet. What do you mean I'm cleared? Well, you got to talk to them. So then I talked to Dr. Raymond, and Dr. Raymond's like, Oh, no, I just called him. I told him how you were. He said, okay, he cleared you. And I was like, what kind of witch doctory bullshit is that? Like, I'm going to go see him before I fucking wrestle. Book that shit. I'm not wrestling tonight. You know, and I, I still remember it was right around the time of the, uh, I came back um, from what I'd imagine like any other pro sport person would come back from a, a, a minor elbow injury way too soon. And uh, it was the debut of Nexus, and I remember it well because I still had, I, I, hey, guys, laser eye surgery. But I couldn't tell any of those guys because they tried to hide the whole fucking Nexus angle from me and Gallows, even though we knew something was up. So when uh, they're beating me up, some asshole was sticking his fingers in my fucking eyes, and I just started fucking smacking people. And Gallows was like, what do we do? And I'm like, just start beating him up. And he started beating up fucking Ryan Reeves. And Reeves was like, no, we're, we're supposed to. We're supposed to go We're over. The yeah, yeah it's like, we beat up. Just totally confused. Um, so I was very mad. Somebody poked me in the eye. It was karma for me laughing at you when Ricky Reyes did it to he you at the Ring of Honor show. Because like it's it has to happen. Yeah, it has to happen. If you yeah. get if they're like, don't touch my eye. It it happens. You touch yeah, the it's eye. Murphy's That's... law. Absolutely, absolutely Murphy's law. Um, and so again, you 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 keep on getting this time off but then not getting this. Yeah. Off. Well, and this is, I'm going to go back to when I said, I don't know when I'm supposed to start. So let's, let's talk about me being the champion and me putting all this pressure on me, me buying into the, on um, the champion and it's pro wrestling and it's tradition and what would Harley race do and like all this stuff. And I made every show and I worked my ass off every show and I tried to make every guy I wrestled with. And I have a lot of fond memories of working with a lot of guys like, you know, Del Rio. Uh, I had great matches with Daniel Bryan. Um, but it, it Is that was, a big thing for you? What would Harley Race do? Yes. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, you know, I, I, I like to think I'm an old school guy. And like, that was a thing, you know. And Harley you get, loves you. You get, you get hurt, you fucking tape it up, blah, blah, blah. You know, and that's what I did. I fucking, I mean, how long was I on TV with my arm in a sling? The sling wasn't just for... For show, I needed. I, I walked around with my arm in a fucking sling all day, except the the fucking two hours in the morning and the two hours at night. I was doing rehab so I could double time to get back in the ring, and then that's why I always had my elbow taped up after that. You know, we like sometimes we put a little donut of like padding on there and shit like that. Um, I'm trying to think. There was just there. There was never. It really seemed like there was never really a place for me in that company, and I just. I always just. Oh, I was. Oh, uh, do you think that's and so here's me playing the other side, uh, because I, I, you know, I love you, 
but I've known you forever. Do you think that was because you were probably like an asshole to a lot of people that worked there? What was? You. So like you can be, I mean, I think it's great, but I know like the way sometimes you probably talk to some of those people there. Uh I get it because they're dopes. But sure. those dopes are like, fuck, this, I don't even want to approach punk. Well, then that's another interesting thing, too. You know what I mean? There's 26 fucking writers that you, you don't know who they are, and they've never been in a real fight in their life. And then they're writing stuff for you. And if you make them mad, I guarantee you, they're like, well, I don't, I don't like that guy. I'm right. not going to write stuff for him. And, you know, and like, so, you, I mean, you're, you're fucked either way. You're so the, do you see that a big reason why when you got so hot, was there people going like, ugh, not this guy. Let's try to. I mean, I guess I'm sure maybe, but like I wasn't even hot at that point. You know what I mean? I was doing the SES stuff and I was looking around like this is the best stuff ever. Why, why aren't we doing anything with this? And they just squandered it away. And maybe that's because, yeah, maybe that's because they're like, oh, he's an asshole. But isn't that a stupid way to do business? Right. You know? Isn't I mean, isn't that fucking stupid? Sure. I mean, if you're, when you're putting money on to there, Try to make money with... You're getting with, them their jobs, right? Shouldn't right. they be trying to make money with everybody? Yeah. Instead of just one person? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe... What do I know? No. <laughs> so you're the champ. You're doing Harley Race style. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember telling Vince, like, hey, we should ride this to Mania, or if I have to drop the title to Rock, let's do a three-way... Uh, it, to me, it was always about what's next. Who am I working with next? Because if you're not working with anybody next, and that's a big problem with that place, is they have no plans going forward for anybody. I think when they call a meeting, Vince will probably be like, what's next for Cena? Because that's all he cares about. And I think that's, that's the wrong way to do business. But I was always trying to set myself up to work with somebody else. Uh, I didn't want to turn heel. Vince came to me and was like, Rock's coming back and he wants to work a bad guy. And you're the champ. Um, so you either, it was either I turn heel or I drop the title to Daniel Bryan. And I was like, well, I would like to work Rock. You know, that sounds, that sounds challenging. Let's, you know, well, you'd have to turn heel. And I was like, uh all right, well, I'd rather be a heel than a baby face anyway, even though I'm making these sweet checks, which are going to get cut in half because of merch sales. But I was like, you know, and then he told me, he goes, I'll tell you what, Phil, uh, you do this for me and I'll owe you one. And I was like, sweet, great. And to me, yeah, at the time, the goal was still WrestleMania main event. So I turned heel. Uh, not the biggest sacrifice, but still a sacrifice when you're baby face and you're making uh, like John Cena merch money and you're beating him in merch sales. Yeah, to to say no, I'm going to be a bad guy now, and you know, five year old Johnny and Timmy aren't going to want to buy your shirt anymore. That's a thing. So I did that, and then that's when I started getting like super beat up. That's when I tore my knee up against John. Um, I kept asking what was going on for Mania. Uh, Vince kept very disappointingly telling me that it was going to be uh, the rematch between Cena and and uh, Rock, and I was just like, that's going to be awful. How about we do this? And I was obviously, I mean, I guess in, if people want to call me a politician, I was trying to politic my mm-hmm. way into the main event. But it wasn't like, let me beat everybody. It was, hey, let's do a three-way. Uh, it'll be elimination. Have, them, have somebody pin me in fucking five minutes. I don't care. And then I'll be able to be like, ha, I did the main event of WrestleMania, and I'll be able to move on. Fuck it. You know, It won't be such a hang-up for me anymore. It won't be such a mind fuck. No, you know, The Undertaker needs somebody to work, and I, I think... Uh, I think you're the, you're the guy to do it. And I was just like, okay, but after that, after that, what happens? And he was like, I don't know. What do you want to do? I was like, all right. And I don't think he asks a whole lot of people what they want to do. And since I was turning heel, they again went back to, oh, we want to put a heater with you. So, and this, I don't know, this will probably blow some people's minds. And then some people will be like, oh, you're full of shit. But I don't fucking care either way. Uh, the Shield was my idea. What happened was, at the time, the head writer was Eric Pankowski. He called me up one day, and he was like, okay, uh, nobody knows you're going to turn heel, um, but we want to stick a stable with you. We want to give you Big Show as your heater. I immediately groaned. I love Show to Death, but that's not a good idea. Uh, they wanted to put Daniel Bryan with me. I groaned. I said, Daniel should be kept as far away from me as possible because, if anything, me and him should be like Brett and Sean. 
You know what I mean? We can be far apart. We can come together when you guys need a fucking program, two or three pay-per-views, and we can always do it, and it'll always be quality. Their idea was a stable with me, Big Show, uh, Daniel Bryan, and uh, the, the only name they ever mentioned was Seth Rollins. But they kept saying a guy from FCW. So then I went to Pankowski and I was like, I don't like the idea. I'm willing to do the heel stable thing. Why don't we pick three guys from FCW uh, that are ready instead of using two guys? You know what I mean? They would just be treading water. They just, who cares? How many, how many times are these guys going to turn? We've seen it. It's not fresh. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I took the idea to Hunter. I took it to Vince. They agreed. You know, Vince was immediately like, who do you have in mind? And I said... Ambrose, Rollins, Chris Hero, or Cassius Ono. Uh, Hunter shot down Hero. They wanted Roman Reigns. They came to me and they're like, what about Liaki? And I was like, you know, like, I, I didn't, wasn't my hill to die on. I said, sure, because it made sense to me. Oh, they want their guy in. He's the pretty guy. But that's good because this guy can learn from working uh, under me. The idea was they were supposed to be my group. Things fucking change. Uh, they like to take other people's ideas and make it their own idea and then tout how awesome that they are. <laughs> uh, so it, became, it, it then became Hunter's idea, and up until the pay-per-view, they were like, well, we were told we might not be with you. And I was like, well, I was, this whole entire time you're supposed to be with me because the idea was they're with me, they're with me, they're with me. I go on to fight Undertaker, and then I have these three guys to work with so after WrestleMania. So you're setting WrestleMania. yourself up so for a future. I am padding my, yeah, I, right. and then, you know what I mean? Uh, and their, their way left me dead in the water. I get beat by the Undertaker. Undertaker is not there the next day. I am, what the fuck do I do? Right. So you're I, there as a loser. Undertaker is not there as a I winner. I pitched all that. They loved it. Things got changed. I didn't really care. Uh, those three guys got called up. They're all doing fucking fantastic right now. Mazel tov to them. Um, that's really kind of either here nor there, except for pissing me off that, hey, once again, I don't have anybody to work. Frustration in the workplace. Frustration in the notched on my badge. <laughs> in the yes. badge place. Uh, so I dropped the title to The Rock. Uh, I... God, what a, um, oh, I, could, I don't even know if I want to cover the Ryback stuff. That took 20 years off my fucking life. <laughs> Uh, Jesus, I mean, we're not here to knock anyone. Uh, no, but I was, but I was beat up and I was torn up. And then John Cena got hurt, uh, and they were like, "Oh, well, how do you feel about this guy? You know, I mean, he's he's definitely not ready, but you know, you can carry him if you want." And I was like, "Yeah, okay, great." So um, that took twenty years off my life, right? Because uh, to I add mean, up, so you're you're already beat up. You're already I'm hurt. already beat up, and then I have Ryback to I have to stiff. wrestle steroid guy, and he's very. I, it's call I call it like I see it. He's so, he's, he's very hurdy. Uh, sometimes deliberate. Call it. Sometimes deliberate. Hurdy. Uh, you know, I mean, there was one time he kicked me in the stomach as hard as he could, and he broke my ribs right at the tail end. You know, and like that. You know, I never got an apology for that. Um, he was he was something else. Real piece so, of work. Boom, that guy. I can tell already. Like you're cranky. You're mad. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're hurt. Yep. You're frustrated. Yep. People are crying. Be happy. You're doing your dream. Yeah. These things are adding up. Fucking notching on your badge, man. Um, you add the you add that. There was a, there was the ribs. I think there was a concussion in there somewhere. You yeah. Had another one in yeah, there. Well, I, I mean, I had the torn up knee. Um, I flew. I did. I did raw Tuesday. I got on the jet. To fly to wherever SmackDown was, Vince and everybody got off. The jet continued on to Pensacola, Florida. Uh, they dumped me. I got surgery Wednesday morning. Um, I'm walking out of the hospital, and Vince calls me. I'm all fucked up on anesthesia. Heard surgery went well, pal, and I'm immediately having like crazy flashbacks to the elbow surgery. And he goes, and I said, yeah, I guess, um, you know, I'm just going to go back to my hotel and, and start rehab, you know, later tonight and get rolling. Good. Uh, we just announced on the website that you're wrestling Ryback in a tables, ladders, and chairs match on the first Raw of, of January. And I was like, that's in th two and a half, three weeks? He's like, yep. Prognosis for your surgery is four to six weeks. And I was like, so you booked me in, a, mm -hmm. in a, a horribly dangerous match with a horribly dangerous opponent. He's like, well, that's when Rock's coming back, so we got to start that program right away. Okay. Uh, I told him I didn't want to do it. He told me uh, that uh, he would owe me one. That's two that's, now. that's two. That's two. 
And I was just like, man, okay. So there was a, for the first time in my career, there was a big part of me that was just like, uh, whereas before I'd be like, get on my horse. I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this rehab, blah, blah, blah. And I was really just like, man, okay, well, all right, I'm the champ. Here's the deal. I called back Vince the next day, and I'm like, uh, when I drop this belt, I'm going to need some time off. Like, I'll burn myself out right now, get myself back in as best shape as I possibly can in three weeks. But the instant I drop this title, I'm, I'm a ghost. You know what I mean? Well, no, I need you for the rematch for The Rock. I said, no, uh, there's no way. You know, like, I'm fucking out of here, you know? And just like, as you said earlier, you get frustrated that I, I went and did these European tours and I'm back on house shows. Like, yeah, I wound up working everything. Um, but I, fuck, I, I, I dropped the, the title uh, to Rock. I do a rematch with Rock and then it's WrestleMania. And I'm, I, I told him like, I'm, okay, I'm peacing out after this. Like, cause this is getting ridiculous, you know? Oh, I, I disagree, Phil. You're going to be the hottest heel uh, after WrestleMania, I was like, explain to me how losing to a 45 year old man that wrestles once a year is going to make me the hottest heel in the world. No disrespect. Mm-hmm. Explain to me how that works. Cause I'm the one that's still going to be here the next day. You know, rock beats me, rock leaves. Undertaker beats me, undertaker leaves. And, uh, I wrestled that fucking match with the, t- with, with taker with the biggest chip on my shoulder because i knew uh match was going to be better than brock and, uh, and and triple h i knew it was going to be better than rock and cena and they always tell you that should be your attitude stone cold says all the time if you don't want to be the champion you shouldn't fucking work here if you don't want to go out there and steal the show and you don't believe that you can you shouldn't fucking work here and i absolutely fucking believe that and i believe that and i did it Again, for I don't know how many WrestleManias in a row where I went out there, I felt I stole the fucking show. Uh, but this time it was different because they were like, wow, you really, you really should have went on last. And I, I got so fucking mad. <laughs> and I said, you better fucking pay me like I did. If you pay me like I did, I got no fucking problem. Um, they did not pay me like I did. They did not give me what I thought I should have made. Uh, but I wrestled that match uh, like I had a death wish. I don't know if you, people can go back and watch it. I've never, ever watched it. I got into a huge screaming match with Vince about that because he's like, did you watch it back yet? And I was like, no. Why? God damn it. You should be proud of that. And I was like, fuck you. I was there. Pay me. That was my attitude. So I obviously, I, I tore up my other knee super bad, uh, strained ACL, uh, torn MCL, torn meniscus, torn PCL. Um, fucking oh, in that match, right? Bruised, yeah. On bruised, that dive. Bruised fucking, uh, uh, what is it? The fucking, is don't that not a me. patella? Some I don't of the fucking P? know. Yeah, patella yeah. sounds Yeah, good. I bruised my knee really bad, mm. right? So yeah, I, I wrestled because to me at that time, I was like, this is the only way I can get time off. This is it. I have to kill myself and get time off. And I, I got my, my fucking, my time off. You know what I mean? And I was gone for two months. There was never, uh, I, I don't know if I should cover the time I tried to quit before WrestleMania. Well, I, I remember you, you had the two months off, yeah. and I remember every time you ever had like a week off or two weeks off, you're always itching to get back. Like it was in you, and I remember those two months off. You were like, "I love, yeah, I love. I have no itch to go. back. I love my couch. Yeah, I, I, in a lot of ways, I, I rediscovered fucking my love for a great many things that I never had time to to do anymore. I was going to Hawks games, I very infamously left and right. I saw their entire playoff run that year. They won the fucking cup. I'm mad that I was already back at work when they won the fucking cup because I should have been in Boston and I would have been in Boston for that. Uh, yeah, I just I discovered I discovered fucking life, mm-hmm. and I started looking at my bank account uh, and being like, "All right, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, I don't I don't need to do this anymore. Like, this is this is I'll go work at Starbucks. You know what I mean? I they'll mean, probably it if it was they'll fun, probably right? actually give me insurance. You know." <laughs> Yeah, you do it if it was fun, right? But it's not it, all of a sudden when you no, look, it when you look fun. at something and you're going, "I'm counting the money," knowing how much I don't have to do this, you know something's wrong, right? Right. But there's also a, a very I have a very strong philosophy about the business, and I don't think 
I don't think a guy like Seth Rollins or Dean Ambrose, I don't think they do. I don't think they look at it and question things and say to management, like, well, why are we doing that? Why are we taking a guy that you know is going to be here every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, and why is he losing to all the part-timers who you're showing are the real superstars, and now people are only going to buy WrestleMania, which is going to affect my pay year-round, and now this network's coming in, and it's going to affect my pay year-round, and I have to make all these other guys, for lack of a better term, look good, which in turn makes me look shit like shit. Well, I, I think those guys probably might, and, and I know, you know, I've, I've hung around Seth enough to know, like, he, I think he's smart. I think you're the only one, and probably for years, that has the balls to say anything. That, that, and and I'd, I'd ask you, like, was there other guys that can go up to Vince and say, fuck you, this is stupid? I mean, Cena, I've seen Cena do it, but me and Cena would do it all the time. Right, and then who else passed that? There is. I don't none. know. Maybe Randy. I don't know. So it's that I'm saying like that unhealthiness. So, so I, I I'm in a very unhealthy point in <laughs> yeah. my fucking life. Not in the two months off. I was super stoked. I got a fucking tattoo of the Stanley Cup that says my summer vacation on it because I never had a summer vacation in my entire fucking life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was driving. I'm doing jujitsu like every day. I'm fucking killing it. You know what I mean? And then I was I was driving down for like a uh, I did this uh, Gracie uh, immersion camp like in Destin, Florida, which is really just like an excuse to like ride jet skis with Henner and everything like that. And it was a blast. And then I was driving on my own dime. Didn't tell anybody. Talked to Joey Mercury. Actually, I was like, hey, I'm going to come down to FCW because NXT wasn't even a thing yet. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down and I want to start getting in the ring and see how my, ring, my, my knee feels. Um, nobody knew. I don't know if Joey stooged it off, but all of a sudden I'm driving down there from Destin to Tampa and I get a phone call from Vince. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm all right. Knee, like I'd been doing jujitsu all week and like my knee is kind of, it, it feels weak. You know, like I feel like I, I should be wrapping it, but I'm not because I want to try to strengthen it. Um, great. Uh, I want you, I want you back for the, I don't know if it was June or July pay-per-view cause it was in Chicago and I went, no, I don't want to come back till SummerSlam. And he said, well, I need you. I need you back. It's Chicago. So I need you, you know, it's not sold out yet. So we put you on and it'll sell out and, uh, we want you to work Jericho. Uh, I worked Jericho enough. So I was kind of like, nah, nah, I think I'll come back at SummerSlam, you know? Well, no, here's what we, you know, and he, and he lays out, uh, like, the summer plans for me. It's me and Jericho, and then I'm in Money in the Bank, which I also refused to do. I didn't want to do. Paul would turn on me, um, and then I would feud with Paul, but he would bring in Brock. And then this, of course, you know where this is going. He's like, and then I need you and Brock for SummerSlam, big, uh, big headline match. And I said, great. And let me preface this, ladies and gentlemen, with... Uh, wrestling is fake and <clears throat> it, it doesn't really fucking matter in a lot of instances who wins and who fucking loses. But um, put yourself in my shoes. I'll disagree with that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so he goes, you versus Brock SummerSlam. And I went, great. Who's going over? And he goes, well, Brock. And I went, great. Who's going to be at work on Monday? And there's just silence on the end of the phone. And he goes, well, uh, I mean, you. And I went, Why? I said, do I get my rematch at the next pay-per-view? He goes, uh, no. I said, when's Brock coming back? He said, um, probably the Royal Rumble. And I went, fucking hell. Okay, so I got to put over The Rock, and he goes away. I got to put over Taker, and he goes away. And now I'm putting over Brock, and he goes away. My stock is dropping rapidly in the eyes of the casual viewer who is who they care about. So if I'm to maintain my main event status, I'm not going to be able to do it by just producing excellent matches on house shows and TVs all the time. I've, I, I now know that the business model has changed, and just me barking about how I don't like that it's changed is going to do anything about it. I now go, well, fuck it. I want to be that guy. <laughs> right. And Vince is like, well, no, I, I need you. The talent pool is really thin right now. And I went, tell Brock to work the fucking house shows. And this is, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, he doesn't like Brock. I'm f- me and Brock get along fucking great, so shut up. But 
Uh, again, the my hang up was WrestleMania main event. I guess I'm just gonna have to do it again. I'll fucking work Jericho. We'll blow it out of the water. I'll do this stuff with Paul. It'll be fucking excellent. Uh, that can get me excited. I'll work Brock. We'll fucking steal the show. And then there's no way they can fucking deny. They can't for the third, fourth year in a row be like, no, this is Punk's year. Even though I thought it was my year every year for three years, they can't be like, nope, he's not in the main event of WrestleMania. So I did the Brock match. I did all that. And then again, well, we don't know what to do with you now. Um, Can you work Ryback? And I said, no. And once again, Vince goes, I'll owe you one. And then I said, that's three you're going to fucking owe me. I said, you know this guy hurt me last time. No, it's going to be different. Like, you know... He's, he's, he, he went away for whatever reason. He turned heel. He, he's he's, he's going to be a Paul Heyman guy. It's going to continue the feud with Paul. I was like, do you see not see a problem with going from Brock to Ryback? Like, it's just whatever. But all right, I'll try to fucking make it work. I was more interested in working with uh, Curtis Axel to try to fucking elevate him because Triple H did such an awesome job at doing it, even though he promised him he was going to. Um, that's the bitter part of me fucking creeping out, ladies and gentlemen. So, but, but it's bitterness out of wanting to see young guys who deserve it yeah. being elevated. So I, I acquiesce. I say, Great word. all right, I'll work Ryback. And I go, to, I go up to Ryan and I go, hey, man, clean slate. Let's fucking kill this. Let's fucking show them you know, that, that you're, you're better than they think you are. Let's show them that I'm better than they think I am. And let's fucking, you know, let's turn this mid-card shit into a fucking main event. Yeah, I'm really excited. Great, blah, blah, blah. First night out. Gorilla press through a table, fucking misses the table. Dumps me on the concrete fucking ground. Tilts my fucking pelvis. Fucks me up for weeks. So let's add the phys- and just we're adding physical fuck Everyone, Well, I'm, I'm compensating because my knee is still fucked. Right. Both my knees. You know what I mean? The one that had just had surgery six months ago and the one that was fucking torn up and I refused to have surgery on. I just wanted to rehab it, which I did. And then he d- and, and like now it's at the point where I walk up to him and I go, you can't tell me you didn't do that on purpose because you've done it so many times now. You, you either tell me right now you're dumb as fuck and you suck or you did it on purpose. And he was like, I'm dumb as fuck. I'm sorry. And like there's nothing I, at that point, like there was nothing I could do. In my mind, there's like, well, great. I'm fucked. There's nothing I can do. So I work him. Uh, it hurts. I had a tag match. Uh, it might have been me and Dragon against uh, uh, Daniel Bryan. I'm sorry. I always that's how I met him. Um, <laughs> Curtis Axel. Such and, an indie nerd. Man. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm a big <laughs> mark. Uh, he there was a match where he kicked me in the ribs as hard as he could. Like he took a shot at me, and I was just like, man, this is fucking ridiculous. You know, like I'm falling apart now. I got broken ribs, and then I got speared by Roman Reigns on something, and I just took an ugly bump on it, and it made it worse. And like. I don't know if anybody's ever even if you've ever even bruised a rib like it sucks your li- your life is miserable you can't sleep you can't fucking breathe you can't work out fuck that fuck all that shit so which of course goes that's your job you got to be in, you got to be na- half naked in front of America yeah. another world yep so i mean working so, out is just as important somewhere along the line um i started to feel worse than i've ever felt in my entire life fucking awful uh, I got uh, I, I worked Luke Harper uh, in a match, and uh, I I got hit with something, and it fucking rung my bell, and I got a concussion. But we were leaving for Europe the next day, so Doc was leaning on me, going, "Do you want me to? Do you have a concussion, or can you go to Europe?" Kind of thing, and I was just like, "You fucking you pigs! I'll go to Europe, whatever." Uh, that's on me. That's my fault. I probably shouldn't have. Uh, after the uh, the European tour, the whole European tour. Uh, I'm dry heaving after every match. I mean, luckily I was in tags. It was me and Daniel Bryan against uh, the Wyatts, and they were awesome and they were fun. The parts I remember, but I'm on, I'm on, I'm on all fours after every match, and I'm either puking for real or I'm just dry heaving because I don't have anything in my stomach. I have no appetite. I don't know what is up and what is down. I can't sleep. I can't fucking train. It's just like a bus, a hotel, a cold building. Um, a miserable existence. Doc, Doc is giving me, Doc's like, oh, you're sick. Here's a Z-Pack. They Z-Pack me to death so much that in December I shit my pants on a SmackDown because that's what antibiotics do to you. 
Right. Is that on? Is that seen on a SmackDown? Yeah, I got I got real mad because uh, I I tweeted like, hey, everybody watch SmackDown because I shit my pants. That's right. Yeah. And then the office was like, oh, you can't say the word shit. Can you take it down? And I was like, you got you fuckers just aren't fun. Like it's fucking funny. I shit myself. <laughs> I was laughing. Vince was laughing. Ambrose was laughing. But you're mad because I'm on social media and I fucking said the word shit. Mm. Fuck. Fucking grow up, man. And then I like deleted the tweet and retweeted like this poop ain't fun anymore. Uh, somewhere along. Hold on. And then you also. <laughs> what did I do? I think you unfollowed WWE after that. I blocked Twitter. them after you that. Blo- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was so cool. They've been blocked for a very long time. <laughs> like while you were working for them, you yeah. blocked. <laughs> oh yeah, they were they were blocked for a while. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to think of some important parts here. Uh, hopefully, y'all are still with us. Yeah. Um, You're at, at some point, at, yeah, I, I'm hurting, but I, I'm I'm hurting so bad. I'm getting two MRIs a week. Legit. Like my neck, my head. Um, we MRI'd my chest. Because we didn't know if we, I, there was something fucking going on. Um, I'm getting CAT scans. Like, I'm fucked up. And so me, your friend, I'm seeing the same symptoms, if not worse, and a, and a couple of us, of before uh, the quote-unquote pipe bomb, right? Like, the unhappiness, the miserableness. Yeah. It's right there, if not worse. Well, sure. So I'm saying that as an outside perspective, for those who don't understand, like... You know, some of you just see you as a dude on TV, but, you know, as the one who knows the real people. Well, and there's also this, the, the owner of the company going, oh, I'm going to owe you one. I'm going to owe you one. And I see my, my checks uh, shrinking, and I got to question, question my pay. I'm hurt, and you're asking me to make these shows even though you know I'm hurt, and you're telling me to take it easy, and you're cutting my pay? What the, what the fuck is wrong with that? I thought you were going to owe me one. You need to fucking fix this. You need to pay me. Uh, I complained about my mania pay. All right. I, I don't even know. I, I don't even like to fucking talk about it, you know, but um, I based it off of did I have the best match? Well, yeah. OK, the best match doesn't fucking mean shit. Right. Because anybody can have the best fucking match. It's you know, it's it's what fucking draws. But I was in the match with fucking Taker. I should be compensated for my fucking match. I should not get any less than Taker, Brock, Triple H, Rock or John Cena. But I know I got paid way fucking less than all of those fucking guys who, in my opinion, for lack of a better phrase, couldn't fucking lace my boots that night. You need to pay me fucking equal. I refuse to be... Even if one of them got one fucking dollar more than me, I was outraged. I should be fucking paid what accordingly. What if I said, uh, but The Rock, he's in Hollywood, he brings all these outside people. I don't give a fuck. WrestleMania is the draw, not The Rock. I don't care what anybody says. That is how I fucking feel. I you and you want to fucking talk about numbers and ratings and shit like that. Uh, my first main event as champion was TLC, and it was a, a John Cena list pay per view, and we did more fucking buys than the year before. The pay per view Rock came back. It was a fucking awful buy rate compared to the one before. But they blamed it on Miz and Truth. That's what they fucking do. It's bipolar. They twist and bend the fucking narrative to support their story. And they, and they have guys like me, I fell into the trap, hanging on that, oh, ratings, and oh, buy rates, and oh, this. But pay-per-view was fucking dying. That was the whole reason for the advent of the network. But they couldn't tell me how they were compensating my fucking pay. They didn't want to tell me because they didn't know. And that's fucking unacceptable. Uh, somewhere along the way, I get this fucking lump on my fucking back. This is where it gets good. So I go to Doc and I go, fucking look at this. This wasn't here last week. What is that? Oh, it looks like a, a, a fa- what did he call it? Uh, not a hematoma, a fatty, I don't know. He said it was like a fatty deposit. He asked me if it hurt. I said, no. I said, but it wasn't there last week. And it's been a long tradition in WWE locker rooms. When somebody has something like that, Doc cuts it out. Everybody watches it. People film it. It's the weirdest yeah. fucking thing. Yeah. Benoit used to pop dude zits. You know what I mean? Anybody who's ever been in the, in the locker room is listening to this. You know what I'm talking about. So they, they tell me, no, we're not going to do anything about it because it's just, it's just like a fatty deposit, whatever. It's like a calcium deposit, whatever. So I, I fucking I let it go. Fine. Uh, it gets bigger. A couple months later, I'm like, this thing got fucking bigger. Does it hurt? No. Well, then let's just leave it. Let me ask you something, Doc. Are you just, is that like your medical opinion or are you just a lazy piece of shit and you don't want to fucking do it? Because I've seen you cut a million of these things out of somebody. Well, you got to wrestle tonight and blah, 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 and you might need like a stitch. I'm like, so fucking what? 
you've put 14 staples in my forehead and then I've had to go out that same night and wrestle again. What is preventing you from, from, from helping me? Well, let's, let's just see you, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Did you have like a theory or? Did I have a theory? Yeah. No, I was just like, what the fuck is this? It wasn't here yesterday. Get rid of it. No, a theory on why he's not cutting. No, nah, he's just lazy. It's just lazy. He's lazy. Crazy. That, I mean, and that's the thing. God, God, guys, I really feel like fucking shit. I have broken ribs and I have a fucking concussion. And they're like, here's a Z-Pack, Phil. And I'm like, fuck. Okay, I take the Z-Pack. I can't sleep. Here's another Z-Pack. I take the Z-Pack. I shit my pants in the ring. I'm like, what the fuck? You know? And then after all that, they gave me an even stronger antibiotic. And I'm like, all right, I'll take this. Maybe it'll make me feel better. It made me feel worse. I had fucking goddamn diarrhea for like three weeks, you know? Was, That's just diarrhea. Oh, man, was I nervous I was going to shit again. God I was like, this is going to be my new gimmick. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean Vince is going to be like, you're going to get all white gear. Oh, God. You know? I was going to be like Bastion Booger. So, I mean, everything fucking comes to a head, and I'm, I'm still motivated. It's Royal Rumble season, and I know Batista's coming back, and I know the main event is Batista versus Randy Orton, but I'm still, I'm still that kid that was in the car with you driving to fucking Pittsburgh and Philly and IWA. And I'm like, I'm going to change their minds. I'm going to, I'm going to have this awesome Royal rumble and they're going to be like, God damn. All right. Punk needs to be in the main event. He hasn't been in the main event. You know, I remember watching Foley's DVD and, uh, they interview Vince and Vince was like, I thought it was a shame that he didn't have his WrestleMania moment before he retired. So I coaxed him out of retirement and put him in the main event. So I saw that, and I was like, well, motherfucker, I'm still here. I'm not retired yet. And well, my hard work's going to shine through, and I'm going to wow them with my fucking my, my fancy pro wrestling skills, and they'll realize that Randy Orton versus Batista would be a big stinker of a fucking match for a main event of WrestleMania 30. And uh, I, I wrestled, like, that day I, I, I showed Doc that thing on my back, which was now purple and the size of uh, a fucking baseball. And had teeth. And, like and a, he, he a went, uh, does it hurt? And I went, yeah, actually, it hurts like a motherfucker. And like the waistband of my tights was like right on it. So like I was aware of it constantly. And it was so big that I felt like if I bumped on it, it would burst, mm -hmm. you know? But like I can't pop it. It's not like a fucking zit or anything. <laughs> and he's like, well, uh, I, I'd cut it out now, but you know you got to wrestle in the rumble. I'd probably want to get you on some antibiotics before I put. And I went, motherfucker! I've been on antibiotics since November. What? What are you doing? Just cut it. Cut it right now. You won't do it. He just wouldn't do it. I didn't get it. So I, I got to do this shit. I got to wrestle in the rumble. I'm number one, and I'm getting thrown out right at the end. And uh, I didn't really give too much thought. Um, you know, you can say a lot of things and like a lot of people will take things out of context or how they want. Like I could say I wasn't thrilled about wrestling Kane um, uh, and people will take that like, oh, he hated wrestling Kane. I love wrestling Glenn. I got along with him. Nobody ever has a bad thing to say about him. The matches were fucking easy. It's just I'd done it so many times. I wanted to do something new, you know. Uh, I wrestle in the fucking Rumble. Um, Kofi goddamn Kingston fucking tells me uh, i'm asking everybody i'm going to everybody hey when you come in do this uh you know tell me what you're gonna do i'll feed for you that fucking rusev guy he was fucking scared to death of me and i was like dude this is your first impression you have to do something he's like okay i'll come over to the corner and stomp you i was like no you have to fucking pick me up and fucking do something i i, I we're in gorilla and i go look around you i go none of these motherfuckers care about you they don't care about you they hope you don't fucking succeed they don't give a shit about your fucking push you have to fucking make your moments count and because you think I'm CM Punk like I don't want to fucking do anything with you beat the shit out of me do a cool move to me just tell me what you're going to fucking do don't just kick me in the fucking corner I'm going to be the biggest star wise I'm going to be the biggest guy in the ring you have to do something to me because everyone's going to be like ooh ah whatever same thing with Kofi I was like he's like hey I'm going to come in you're going to be in the ring I'm going to do my little role in the ring which I never knew how he did that was I thought it was like the most athletic thing ever <laughs> where he can jump from the floor and roll through the bottom in the middle rope and somersault and come up and clothesline me mm -hmm. concussion city I, I didn't want to tell him afterwards I don't even know if I did so Kofi if you're listening to this I love you it's okay fucking boom I <laughs> flat back it's so Jewish by the way I like, flat back well I, you know gonna, I'm hanging out with you and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's okay. I, I, I flat I flat back and I'm just 
fucking rocked. I'm out of it. Number 12, 13. So I roll, I roll under the fucking corner and I motion to Doc and I go, I have a concussion. And he was like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I just started laughing. And I was just like, Doctor, you are the most worthless piece of shit I've well, ever met hold in my on. entire life. I agree, but I don't right. agree. But like, what what does he do? But this is miserable. This is miserable. Fucking Phil Brooks, you're talking about. Okay. So he goes, "Do you want me to tell somebody?" I said, "No, I'm just going to sit here for a minute. I'm going to collect my wits, and I'll, I'll 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 go I'll go do my shit." Um, next thing I know, one of the refs is like, "Kane's out here. He's going to pull you out early." And my knee jerk reaction from 15 plus years of being a pro wrestler was, "Fuck you." I'm finishing this match. If Kane touches me, I'm going to fucking quit. You know? So then poor, poor Glenn's out there and like, a, like he's like shirtless wearing like business slacks Corporate and Kane. he's like crouching down and the camera's not trying to shoot him and like it was chaos. Mm-hmm. But then eventually we did the angle. He chokeslammed me through the fucking thing and I walked in back and uh, Doc was there and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, cut this fucking thing out of me right now. Like whatever the fuck this is, cut it out of me. Like I... I feel like fucking shit. I've had a fever for weeks. I'm fucking green when I look at myself on television. I, you know, and he won't do it because now he's like, oh, it's a concussion. It's this, it's that, blah, blah, blah. And that night, man, driving to Cleveland, I couldn't sleep. I was just fucking laying there in bed. And, you know, I look over and, you know, I, I know I'm marrying this woman. I haven't asked her yet, but like I know. And I'm just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? It was, I had a big moment of clarity. You know, and then I went to I went to fucking TV and like uh, they wanted me to take their concussion test. And I was just I was I just had it. I was belligerent. I was argumentative. Um, And then they're like, oh, and you have to take a piss test, too. I flew off the handle at that. I was just like, I'm sick of this fucking shit. I'm like, you're going to amend the fucking drug test policy because of people who have two strikes so they can fucking either fail again or work one of those strikes off. Continue to do drugs. And you're going to tell me, like, I have to take another fucking piss test? And they're telling me that I was working that night, and they're telling me that I wasn't working that night, and, like, I, I, just, I just fucking had it. And, and the theme here is you're argumentative, and you've told me before, you're like, I didn't like how much I was telling people to fuck off. I hated it. Right? <laughs> and it was happening... Yeah, you were doing it. You were telling people to fuck off. You were telling everyone. Fuck and they were, you, and they were like, you. "We need you to sign this for this uh, visa for this country because we're going on this tour." And I was like, "Right now, me, right now in Cleveland, Ohio, take fucking care of me right fucking now. Don't worry about where I'm supposed to be tomorrow. Don't worry about what segment I'm supposed to be. Fucking fix me. My fucking ribs are broken. My knee is fucking torn up. I'm fucking sick. Fucking help me." And they were just like, no, you have to sign this. You have to piss in this. You have to fucking go take this this this. And I, I think that's test. the line. Fucking help me. And, and then I just went, you know what? Vince, I need to talk to you. And Hunter was in the room, and he goes, oh, I'll leave. And I went, no, you know what? You can stay. I don't care. You need to hear this, too. And I just looked Vince in the eye, and I said, I do not love this anymore. I'm fucking sick. I'm fucking hurt. I'm fucking confused. I don't know, as a business, what we're doing anymore. I every day you tell me this is a team effort, but every day it's a fucking individual effort by me to find what's necessary to even fucking come here. I said it's not fun. I have zero fucking passion for this. I'm fucking concussed. I'm fucking hurt. Uh, and all you care about is what segment I am and how soon I can fucking get my gear on and when I can pee in this fucking cup and I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, I, I, I talked openly um, about bringing back Dave as a baby face and I was like, how do you not see how that is the worst idea? How do you not see? Even Dave. And he was quoted fucking, as saying. And, uh, d- dude, I don't know. I can't remember if you were here or not. Dave was on the fucking couch a couple months ago, and we talked about all of this. So please, dirt sheets. Don't try to stir shit. Me and Dave are friends. I'm but just. He, I'm, he I'm giving quoted. you a recanting of exactly what I said and how I felt at that time. And Dave was fucking cool with all of it because I fucking talked to him about it. You know, I mentioned something about the piss test. Hunter goes, "Well, you know, Dave just took the same piss test you did." And then I just looked at Hunter and I went, "Did you?" And he had nothing to say. And then I said, "Look, 
Uh, I thought when I re-signed three years ago, Vince, I told you if I couldn't be all that I could be that you should fucking fire me. That if I was a fraud and I was anything less and fell short of the fucking mark, I said I, I sold more shirts than John Cena uh, until I turned fucking heel for you. You said you owed me one. I worked guys that were fucking dangerous uh, and you said you owed me one. Uh, I did all these fucking things, and all I wanted was the main event of WrestleMania. And it's fine if you don't think that is me and that I'm that caliber of a fucking superstar, but then you need to fucking fire me because I do not want to be here, and I do not want to be anything less. I will go somewhere else, and I will get more fucking over because I know I can. You have shackled me, you have creatively stifled me. You have made this a very toxic environment. I no longer want to be here. I said, this, I said, it boggles my mind how Daniel Bryan has not figured into your plans to be in the main event of WrestleMania because this is his fucking year. Just like two years ago, it was my fucking year and I was white fucking hot, just like he is now. And what did you do? You fed me to this guy. And I pointed right at Hunter. And, and Vince was just like, I, I, this is the concussion talking. I can't believe you're saying any of this. You, you're in, you're in the, the main event. You, it, is a, it is a main event. You're wrestling Triple H. And I, 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 polite, I turned to Hunter and I said, all due respect, I do not need to wrestle you. You need to wrestle me. I do not want to wrestle you. I seriously resent you for not putting me over three years ago when you should have. That would have been best for business, but you had to fucking come in and squash it. And then I had to lose to fucking Truth and, and Miz. Like, it didn't make any business sense then. It doesn't make any business sense now. And I'm in a position now where I can tell you that I don't have to and nor do I want to wrestle you at WrestleMania. I don't care if I was supposed to win, which I was. I didn't care. I didn't want to give him the fucking privilege. Do you understand that? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I said a lot of shit in there. Uh, I, I told him again, and, and you know, and Hunter, Hunter was gritting his teeth, and I knew, hey, I mean, he never, he never liked me. It's one of those situations where you always hear the stories in the dirt sheets about, oh, Hunter says this about punk and else negative stuff, but me and him in a room together, never any good vibes, always negative, the way he would always look sideways at me, the way he always treated me. Yeah, Listen, for, for instance, a simple courtesy call, hey, that is the European tour. You can't do the movie. We're going to have Randy do it. But he thought he didn't have to do that because I was a piece of shit. Hmm. Listen, I, I mean, I, you tried to convince me when you were white hot after the, and the, your first match. was. I tried a, to convince myself. Buddy. Yeah, and convince yourself to convince me, saying that this guy coming out of retirement and beating you and then going back into retirement. Did he fuck? He did. He did that, didn't he? Yes. He came out of retirement. He was, he was gone. Came back, you were his first match, and then he went back to and leaving. then he then he went away again, yeah, to just stop to stop you, yeah. I mean, so I, Hunter Hunter goes, you know, Punk, you were in the best match of WrestleMania last year, and that was the main event. And I was like, I'm not fucking stupid. The main event is the last match. You can push it to people who buy the pay per view that oh, there's four main events. There's one main event. There's always been one main event, and I deserved it. And I still deserve it. And now Daniel Bryan deserves it. And you you think you're gonna you're just gonna give it to Batista and Randy, you know? And I, I made this argument. I was like, when you look at the this the 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 roster, how many active members of the roster have been in a WrestleMania main event? How do you expect anybody to get fucking better? AHL hockey players have to play with NHL hockey players in order to get better. I needed the experience of a main event at WrestleMania with somebody who is equal or better than me so I could learn, so I could further become an asset to the fucking product. So I could draw more instead of always being told, well, you're not a draw. How do you know? Why don't you give me a fucking shot? And anytime they did give me a shot, I knocked it out of the fucking park, ran, caught the ball myself, and then <laughs> fucking shoved it down their fucking throats to remind them, yes. I am all that, yeah. and then some, and more. And you fuckers just, it's, it, 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 what it boiled down to is that it was an old, out-of-touch man's decision. No, this is going to be the greatest main event of all time. And then they wound up changing it. And I'm so fucking stoked 
that Daniel Bryan got his fucking main event. That they can never take that away from him ever, whether they want to make fun of him or what or what not. But Hunter told me I was in main event because I, re- I wrestled The Undertaker. And I turned to him and I said, tell me that I got paid the same amount of money as you, Brock, Cena, Rock, or, you, you know, uh, whoever. And he was like, mm. and once again, he had nothing to say. He didn't say anything. And I was just like, right on. All right. I said, it. I'm fucking, I'm out of here. Right. And Vince, with tears in his eyes, fucking stood up. And I stuck my hand out. And he went in for a fucking hug. And it was like a reluctant, you know, like I just kind of patted him on the back a little bit. And I looked at Hunter and he stuck his hand out. I shook his hand and I said, goodbye. And I walked out. Uh, no, but you weren't like, I quit. Fuck you. It was like, or what? I mean, no. Right? And, and, you know, and this is this is my rationale when I think about it. It's like, you know, people be like, oh, my God, he walked out on his contract and he did this. First of all, I'm an independent contractor. I could have walked whenever I wanted to. Right. Second of all, uh, I didn't do it in the middle of a program. I didn't say I'm quitting unless you do this. I didn't say uh, I didn't hold them up. I got choke slammed through a table at the end of the Royal Rumble. I, I you know, I, I wasn't I, there. wasn't everything advertised. It wasn't like Kane versus Punk at the next pay per view. I, I I walked, you know. And now after all of that, this is where the fucking story actually starts to get really good, because a week after I fucking left, Vince texts me, just like the two surgeries. How you feeling, pal? You ready to come back to work? And I text him like, no, I'm, I'm so mentally fucking shot. I still can't sleep. This, this, that. My, uh, my, my, my lovely wife convinced me to go to her doctor in Tampa. I went to her doctor in Tampa. I walked in. I've never met this guy, right? He looked like Patrick Bateman. It was kind of creepy. Like if Patrick Bateman had white hair, mm-hmm. that was him. His last name was Bateman, too. It was very strange. So, his name was Patrick. So I walk in, and it was Patrick <laughs> Bateman. So I walked in. Uh, never seen him before. Um, he's got no idea who I am. He's like, okay, so what's the problem? And I fucking yank my, my, my shorts down and I show him this fucking thing on my what back. What kind of doc? Oh, okay. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he looks right at it. He doesn't touch it. He just looks at it, cocks his head sideways, and he goes, that's a full-blown staph infection. Full-blown. Yeah, and I, and I looked at him and I laughed. And you were there when the doctor told me I had a fractured skull. Mm-hmm. Same laugh. I just went, <laughs> like, yeah, of course it is. I have a staph infection because, of course, I do. Right. Why not? And I was like, all right, what are you going to do? And he's like, uh, I mean, uh, that's, he's like, that's like MRSA. He's like, I can tell right now. Like, that's fuck, it, the thing's like purple and green. He was like, I can cut it out, and you need to go to a hospital and get, like, on like, an, IV, like an, an antibiotic IV drip. And I was like, well, let's say we didn't have time for that, you know? Um, he just loaded me up with antibiotics. He cut the thing. He squeezed it. Shit shot onto the ceiling. Uh, I've had tattoos in some of the most painful places. I've fractured my skull. Ryback has broken my ribs on a, a kick on purpose. Um, I've, I've wrestled three weeks after knee surgery. This was the most painful experience of my entire wow. life. And I don't know why it hurt so bad. Did it get videotaped? No. Oof. But... I sweat like I was in the fucking Sahara Desert, like I was clutching the table, and this doc was just squeezing this shit, and he kept squeezing this shit, and then he fucking, he patched it up, put a Band-Aid on it, and he gave me three months of antibiotics, and I was like, great, and so I asked him, I was like, I've been on antibiotics for a long time, like why wouldn't it do this, and he was like, unless you're on specific antibiotics to kill a MRSA infection, he's like, like a Z Pack's not going to do anything. Right. And was he like, you've been working on this thing? Yeah. Did he and say he, it was like possible to? No. And he said, how long? And I was like, I, I, I don't know, three, at least three months. And he was like, you should be dead. You wow. could have died. Because I, you know, I look up staph infections, people. They're nothing to fuck with. So I get that taken care of. All of a sudden, I can sleep. And I slept for a long fucking time. Um, Vince texts me and says that I'm suspended. He says, well, uh, I, I, I wish you could have, you know, lasted until the end of your contract, but uh, you're suspended for two months. So I did the math in my head. It was the day after Mania, my suspension was up. So I was like, all right, I'm missing Mania. Fucking whatever. I don't care. Um, I hate wrestling at this point. You know what I mean? I'm just like, ah, whatever. Sure. So uh, the two months is up, and I don't hear anything. Nobody texts me. Nobody says, your suspension is up. I had to listen to Vince on an investor call say that I was on a sabbatical. And I was like, huh, 
why wouldn't he announce to his investors that I was suspended? That's fucking weird. Uh, and then I don't get my royalty check. I, I got some wonky shit going on with the mail, so I just figured maybe it's late. So another week goes by. I don't get it. My wife, well, you don't figure it's... But you also like... Ah, I, I fa- <laughs> I, I give, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt here. you know. And then I'm downstairs in my basement cleaning out bins that were on my bus, and I find a royalty check from last year that I just forgot to cash. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... And can I put this full circle, though? Yeah. Because I remember you telling me a story. You were at Harley Race's house once. <laughs> and he like, looked under the couch and found like, a $10,000 check. He just had him laying around the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love how what would Harley Race do? Here, here uh, you but are. M- this check was for exponentially way more <laughs> than that. So I find this check, and now I'm like, fuck, what do I do? You know? I'm like, I talk to my wife about it, and I'm like, all right, well, I'll, I'll call him, and I'll be like, you need to reissue me this check, uh, plus send me my royalty check, because I haven't gotten it, you know? And uh, I called the name of the guy who's on the check. His name's Tom. <laughs> I call him, and he answers the phone right away. And I go, hey, Tom, it's Phil Brooks. And, like, I can hear his teeth start chattering. And he's, he's like, um, uh, well, I, uh, uh, and I was like, hey, dude, relax. Listen, I found this check. Uh, here's the, uh, I'll email the number. Can you reissue me this? And I'm kind of assuming that maybe you guys are holding my check unless there was something wrong with my mail. Can you resend me my royalty check? He tells me the royalty check is on the desk of Scott Amon, who is their lawyer. And I went, well, why? Because nobody's, yeah, I said, you can't withhold my money. You know, like I haven't talked to anybody. Nobody's contacted me. Uh, I mean, let me talk to him. Well, I'll tell him you called. Okay, what's his phone number? Get his phone number. And then every day I called Tom and I called the lawyer and nobody picks up their phone. Nobody returns their phone calls. Nobody responds to my messages. Uh, They're not sending me the reissued check. They're not sending me my royalties. So I'm like, okay, so are we just stalemated and then I'm just going to sit on my ass until my contract is up? That's fine because... There was a shitload of fucking money I was leaving on the table, but I didn't care because I was happy uh, and I wasn't stressed out and they weren't like slinging mud and freaking out and I wasn't. And I was like, all right, well, maybe it's just, you know, two ships passing in the sea and, mm-hmm. and that's it. And I'll let them keep that fucking money, you know, even though that's like a lifetime of fucking money to most people. Right. I'll let them keep it because that's what my health and my sanity was worth to me. And then uh, I would get weird butt dials. Like Mark Carano butt dialed me a few times. He would butt text me. I would get like an L or just like that blank text circle. You know what I mean? And then uh, uh, a woman by the name of Jane Geddes butt dialed me. Like she called me and I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, cool. Maybe it's about my checks. You know, I'll let it go to voicemail, see what she says because that's always what I do. It's just seven minutes of dead. I can hear her talking to Mark Carano in like the talent relations room, you know. So I'm fuck like Phil Brooks. So fuck I'm like, CM Punk. no, nothing like that. You couldn't really make anything out. So I'm like, fuck it. I called her back. Hey, James, Phil. I uh, saw that you called. I'm assuming you called about the two checks that you guys need to send me. I'm I'm overly nice. I tell her I hope she's good. This this that blah blah blah. I don't hear back from her until like a week later, where she texts me and was like, oh, I didn't mean to call you but I've looked into those checks. I'll get back to you. She never gets back to me. Uh, I didn't bother because at this point, I'm talking to the person who I'm supposed to talk to. It's talent relations. She's not calling me. She's not returning. They're not sending me the checks, blah, blah, blah. I have to switch gears here um, because I'm getting married. I'm planning a honeymoon. Plus the Hawks are in the fucking playoffs. Like all hell's breaking loose. (laughs) And, uh, I, I, put that, I put that shit on the back burner because I don't care about the money and I'm more focused on my fucking new life, my wife. I'm working on this honeymoon shit. I'm crossing my fingers that the, the fucking hawks can wrap it up so I can go on my honeymoon, you know. Uh, two days before my wedding, I get a text from Hunter out of the blue. Hasn't talked to me since, since Cleveland. And uh, he says, hey, you got time to talk. And I'm a little bit pissed off at this because it's the... 11th of June. I thought you were going to say it's game two. No. I'm re- <laughs> <laughs> He's texting me during the hockey game. No, it's the 11th of June, and he texts me if I have time to talk. 
And I said, I'm a reasonable guy. I've always had time to talk. I've always just been a phone call away. Um, but I'm getting married in two days and I'm going to my honeymoon. How about we talk the instant I get, the day I get home, I'll fucking call you. In the meantime, reissue me that royalty check that I've been asking about for the past two months. Send me my royalties that I've been asking about for two months. That is reasonable. And then I will talk to you when I get back from my honeymoon. He did not respond to the text. Uh, the day of my wedding, I got a FedEx in the mail. Uh, and I, it, was, it was my termination papers. I was fired. You were fired. I was fired. Yeah. So take that, everyone who says I need to be, uh, I'm a quieter on Twitter. <laughs> You're a real quieter. I was fired. On your wedding day. On my wedding day. Very calculated and very deliberate. And as much as I kind of chuckled at it and didn't let it affect my day, I was like, once again, you push too fucking far. You push the wrong guy. And why should no, I mean, not why should nobody hear about this, but fuck, man, you know, some people shouldn't, it should be known that, that you're being fired on your wedding day. Well, I mean, you take, here's Vince McMahon who wants to hug me goodbye and he has tears in his eyes and he's like, oh, we're, we're family. And he fucking fires me on my wedding day when I was just trying to get, you know, like, and the, the, the letter was ridiculous. It was like, you're, you, you, your contract's terminated. Um, you forfeit all of your royalty rights. You're in breach of contract as of January 27th, which I'm not even a fucking lawyer, and I know you can't claim retro breach. You know what I mean? Like, if I was in breach of contract on January 27th, January 28th, they had to be like, you're in breach of contract. We're not giving you your royalties. And I would have been like, yeah, great, fine. I'm going to go home because I have the staph infection that you refuse to treat and diagnose, plus I have this concussion. And I've needed time off for at least a year, and you won't give it to me. Uh, so I just kind of laughed at that. There was a big no compete, uh, specifically naming um, uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships, which I got a huge kick out of. I was like, "All right, all right okay," uh, but but they're not but they're not competition with WWE. But in mine and in Del Rio's uh, no compete clause, they're like, "You can't you can't go to UFC," but they're not our competition at all. Why would they be? No. Well, because they're going to murder people in the ring. Yeah, right. So, uh, longer story short, um, I did a little bit of legwork. Uh, the 15 minutes I had to spare, I called a guy, a, 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 a vicious, a vicious lawyer. Uh, he's Jewish. Shalom. From, uh, from, uh, from L.A. And I said, here, here, uh, here's the deal. Here's who I am. Here's my story. I'm going on my honeymoon. I'll call you the day I get back. And he was like, great, let's get these motherfuckers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we did. We, we, we lawyered up, and we, we got those motherfuckers. And the only thing I can't talk about is, is the terms of the settlement. Uh, I don't think I'll get in trouble for saying that I got everything I wanted, uh, and then some, you know. So then there's all that shit about the video game, which was dumb of them to advertise me for the video game. Like, 2K Sports tweeted at me, do I have your attention now? Well, 2K Sports, do I have your fucking attention now? Thanks for the big fat check. And you're, uh, it's, it's split, right? I mean, it's done each ways. I it, mean, it took, obviously it took you a while come here. It took talk. a while. They tried to, they tried to do all this wacky shit where they asked me if I wanted to make a joint statement. I'd said, go fuck yourselves. Um, they tried to throw a non disparagement clause in where both sides wouldn't speak negatively of the other one. Uh, and I said, I through my lawyer, obviously I was like, I haven't said a word since I left. I said, you're the motherfuckers who go on television and call me a quitter in my hometown. So if you want to go on television in my hometown and fucking apologize and say that you lied, that I didn't quit, that you fired me on my wedding day and see how they fucking react, I'll consider signing a non-disparagement clause. Mm -hmm. But I also had no plans to go on this, this big anti-WWE tirade. And if anybody out there thinks that that's what this is, it's really not. It's just me telling my story. If there are negative and bitter parts, that's a part of fucking life. And like I said before, I've embraced it I'm working through it. I'm getting over it. They kept saying, oh, we, know, we know your client's going to TNA. We know your client's going to TNA, and the whole platform is going to be fuck WWE and this and this. And my lawyer was like, I'll tell you right now, he's not going to TNA. He absolutely despises professional wrestling, and he wants nothing to do with it. He says he's never going to wrestle again. You know? And they just kept trying to get these little things, because like, as much, you know, they're bullies. They want to, even though they're losing, they want to try to feel like they've won something. So um, 
you know, when you see my stuff on Shop Zone now, it's because they have X amount of merchandise that they've already produced that I'm allowing them to sell uh, because, you know, I don't know, maybe there's a fan out there in Indonesia that wants texting gloves. They can get those now, and yeah. I and I, I, you know, I, I get my you're royalties okay, for okay it. I get my royalties for it, so it's it's all good. But there's no working relationship, and there never will be ever again. It's you know, like the that wedding, that wedding day thing. You know, it's pretty ridiculous. And I've had to deal with people, uh, you know, strangers on Twitter. And you asked me if it affects me, and I told you it does minusculely. Like, you know, when they're like, "Oh, when I, they'll tweet me and like they'll tweet ape, like, oh, he's gonna walk out on your marriage, like he walked out on his contract." Like, motherfucker, it's not even the same thing. For ten years of my life, I was illegally listed as an independent contractor, and they were terrified that I was gonna go to court and ruin the way they do fucking business. I would like to see them fucking get some sort of a union for the boys and girls. Uh, that way, I know they're serious about protecting them um, from concussions and other things. There, there should be something like that in place, but there's not. They're independent contractors, but they can't work anywhere else. It's just like UFC is not WWE's competition, but but you can't go you can't go work there for a year after we fire you on your wedding day. You know, it, it's a it's a, a I don't I just don't. I don't like it, you know, and I don't and, have, to, and, and I don't, don't have, have to, to fucking like it. Like right. it. Yeah. yeah, and and I'm out, and I'm I'm super stoked, and I focus on shit that makes me happy. I'm writing comic books, uh, I'm fucking training my ass off, and I'm you know I'm married, and that's the important shit. And I think, and that's gonna be hard, but like I think that's the key, you know, uh, when. Batista stopped and he did uh, uh, an MMA sh- fight. Yeah, I remember we had this conversation, but I, like I remember like I, like this was my own thoughts because a lot of, it's easy to start ripping on him. Like, sure, uh, but I was like, you know, he probably really wanted to do MMA. Yeah, and he went and he had a fight. I had a huge conversation with him about it. Good for him. And, like, and that's what I said, you know. And it's and hard like, because the world knows who you are, but like if that's a, something he wants to do, yeah, and you know, but there's a, there's always going to be those negative people that are like, oh, you can't do this, oh, you can't do that. I'm sure when Rock left wrestling for fucking Hollywood, everyone's like, yeah, he's gonna fall flat on his face, and you know, I get that all the time. It's gonna be yeah. hard for you. I'm saying it's it's gonna. I mean, yeah. you're gonna venture into like the, doing the Marvel stuff, whatever that's, I want. That's yeah. not. It's gonna be. It's a new stuff. Like, and you have to be able to go do that stuff, right? And I guess, like, uh, I, I just I open people to have that on their mind that, like, it's just like he, he's going into a new world yep. and invite him into doing whatever he wants because, like, he's a real human being and he wants to do And I'm saying this to you. You're yeah. Really, yeah. And, and, if, and you know what? If you want to buy the comics, if you want to read them and you want to support, awesome. And if you never liked me because I'm a jerk when you met me in public because you were a fucking dick to me, so I don't feel like I need to be nice to you or give you anything that you want from me, uh, don't, don't buy it. Don't support it. Don't follow me on Twitter. Right. Don't, you know, it, it's, it's a very simple philosophy, you know, like do the things in life that you want to do that you're interested in and don't worry about what anybody yeah. else is doing. And you, and, and you might win. You might fail. I mean, you might fail at some stuff. Uh, and it's, it's just, that's what it's hard. It's going to be under a microscope. But like, uh, I mean, I know you well enough that like, hopefully just like, fuck it, man. You're, you go for whatever you want. Do whatever well, you want. Well, there's tons of people that are going to say, and I say it probably 85% of the time I failed at wrestling. I failed at my goal of the, the main event of WrestleMania. Even though I, I've come to terms with it and I look back at it like, uh, you know, that fucking match with Taker was better than anything on the show. And I had everybody from old Kevin Dunn to Vince being like, oh, that was the best match. It should have went on last. You know? And I was just like, yeah, I know. You know? So, like, that's, that's the feather in my cap, you know? Right. How do you feel? I feel awesome. Yeah. A little hungry. I mean, after this. After this? That's good. It's good. I mean, like I said, there's still people that are going to be like, oh, you're a quitter. You took your ball and went home because that's what, that's what they heard on, on Monday Night Raw. So they're going to you know, be a sheep and just regurgitate that. But mm-hmm. like, that's cool. Like, I, didn't get, I didn't quit. I got fired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I do, I do feel like I, that it, it does sound like uh, you could make it a battle of one guy versus one machine and like, you know... It's, Unfortunately, it seems like, and for every story, there's heel and baby face, but right. like, and, and hopefully, like, that had to be said as you're talking about it, but like, it is, it's not you versus them, it's, it's your story and like why you need to be free. That's right. kind of and what I, I take I out of it. I didn't want to be like one of these crazy guys who's like, fuck WWE, because I'm not. I still have friends who fucking work there. Um, you know, aside from Dirt Sheets reporting that, oh, Chris Jericho says that CM Punk has 
doesn't talk to his friends from wrestling anymore. No, I don't talk to the guys who have fucking agendas who are trying to ask me what happened so they can fucking report about it on their podcast or blog about it or some stupid shit like that. Mm-hmm. So if you're out there and I stop talking to you, it's because you had an agenda. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, weren't, you weren't checking in on me uh, because you're fucking concerned about me. You wanted to, to be like, oh, I spoke to Punk, and you wanted to use our private conversation as some sort of a weird fucking way to grab uh, hits or whatever the fuck you call them. Uh, well, cool, man. I mean, we covered a lot. How long was this? Uh, up there. Yeah. Up there. You're going to put it all on there? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. All right. Um, and then I guess we'll, we'll kind of do a cool down one next week. Yeah, we'll do another one. I'm yeah. sure people have questions, and hopefully you're cool and you're respectful, and if you are really a fan. Uh, and I, I would like to point out one thing. There was a big uh, report about some kid at a Hawks game who wanted uh, a picture with me. And, th- I mean, this made the rounds. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's so easy to hear his side of the story. And yeah. Uh, and you, you the, have- the side of the story is I don't get to see my wife as much as I would like to. And we have fallen into that lame grown-up thing where we do, like, date night, you know? And we went to a Hawks game. And, uh, unfortunately, the four other people I took pictures with that night right. didn't post a big story yeah. and email fucking dirt sheets to be like, CM Punk's so cool. Uh, that would have been helpful in this situation. But, like, uh, to set the scene... You, there's there's two 20 minute intermissions in between periods so like the whistle the whistle blows we run up out of our seat you're in a human traffic jam i need a beef sandwich she needs a hot dog so we got to go to two different fucking places you know what i mean and it's like we're getting this stuff i got a bottle of water and a beef sandwich in my hand and i'm trying to pull my wallet out and we're in line to get a, a fucking hot dog and the lady's like the credit card machines are broken so now while holding a beef sandwich and a bottle of water in my wallet, we're trying to juggle to see who has cash. And I hear, hey, Phil. And we both look at each other and just start laughing. We're like, yeah, of course this happens right now. You know what I mean? Phil, can I get a picture? There's no please. There's no excuse me. There's no hi, my name is. There's nothing. Do this for me. So I do not pay any attention to this person. And we, we continue to pull our, our singles together so we can give this lady cash to get a fucking hot dog for my wife to go back to her seats to watch our hockey game. Uh, I'm fine with people coming up to me in public. Like I said, literally that night, four other people I took pictures with because they were like, hey, excuse me, punk. I'm a big fan. My name's blah, blah, blah. A human interaction. Not, hey, Phil. Hey, Phil, can I get a picture? Because no, you can't. Because fuck you for being rude. Yeah. That's what you get. You're nice to me, I'm nice to you. You're fucking rude to me, I'm rude to you. And that is the other side of that story. And I'll share one story as we leave. Uh, in the mail, I got this email from this, uh, this, this, uh, the Wrestle Ruse guy who sells little underwears that are wrestling trunks. He, he goes, man, you're such an inspiration, blah, blah, blah. And then that day... Uh, is it that day? That day. You got the mail that day. You text me and go, this guy's wearing a cabana shirt. How great. And then okay, so I'm in L- I'm in Los Angeles, and I'm at this breakfast spot by myself, and I see this guy walk in the door with the I uh, star of David Cabana, I, the the I love Cabana shirt. It's blue. It's it's you can't miss it. And I go, oh wow, this guy's got a the Cabana shirt on. And then uh, Punk I guess just leaves, but then uh, the guy's like, holy shit! Oh, and you text me, go, yeah, I bought him pancakes. Yeah, like yeah. he was sitting at the table with like a girl and like two friends. So like when my bill came, I was like, I'll take the bill for that table too. And then I went to the bathroom and I tried to just sneak out, but he like like a hawk. He was like waiting for me. Yeah, I, I don't want to make it. Th- you know, I didn't want to be like, hey, but it wouldn't be I way just, cooler if you I just had- bought your breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, I was walking out the door. I didn't care. Yeah, but he oh, stopped me. It would have been so cool if you just left and then he's like. They're like, uh, that guy bought you uh, pancakes. And, the, it, but, and But he he had no idea. He was you're like, what guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why that guy bought me picked, pancakes? He picked that I Star Cold shirt up at the, the thrift store. Who the fuck was that? <laughs> that happened to me once. C.J. Wilson, you know, he made the PMA shirts. Yeah. And then I'm I was on my bike, and you know how they paint that mural on this on the side of Evergreen here. Mm-hmm. They, some guy was painting the mural in a PMA shirt. Oh, yeah. So I stopped, and I was like, hey, man, where'd you get... Yeah, I, I got to know you somehow. CJ, and the guy looked at it down, and he goes, I got it at a thrift store. Can you tell me what PMA means? Uh, <laughs> that's great. So we figured out somebody from the car dealership probably just took a bunch of the shirts and gotcha. fucking get, like, sold them at the, the Salvation Army. That's great. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, I bought that guy pancakes. He was wearing your shirt. Goddamn right. Well, I won't do plugs, because... Uh, this is you, long. You can just come on and plug whatever you want whenever you want it. Fuck yeah. 
there it is. Uh, lots of twists at the end, right? Lots of information to take in. Maybe take a second, take it all in, understand what you've heard. Now, you can send the emails, and we will talk about it next week. I am going to make you listen to the beginning of the show to find out what that email is if you didn't listen to it, all right? I know some of you. I get what you're up to. Right to the interview. Listen to the front part. It's fun, informative. You'll like it. You'll dig it. You'll find the email there. Here's the thing. You had a question. You didn't understand something. You'd really like him to discuss this point of it. It's been on your mind. You've been tweeting and talking with your friends. Send the email. Here's the other thing. You're a piece of shit, and you're like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. They're not going to answer my question because you say, fuck you. You quit. You're a piece of shit. Well, all you have to do is email nicely being like, man, this is a wild story. I'm kind of interested why you quit. That's it. Like you can be controversial. You can send something in that is controversial and different and uh, might upset him. But if you say it in a normal tone and a normal email, we're happy to discuss it. That's the point. He wants to get all of it out there. So for the trolls of the world who are desperate to get his attention or desperate to yell and swear and I don't know, call him Hitler or something. It's so easy to say the exact same point you want to say, but say it constructive and then we'll get to it and we'll make a point of it. We're doing it next week. Punk on the show this week, on the show next week. Pretty cool, man. Pretty deep, pretty wild. Uh, I like it. I like it. Obviously glad we could do it. Uh, before we get out of here, let's get into some plugs and upcoming events. Again, the best way you can support, a lot of stuff up there, coltmerch.com and digitalcult.com. Brand new t-shirts, the Wrestling Road Diaries digital downloads are both over there. Episodes 1 through 35, the early bunch, it's all over there. I am on Twitter and Instagram, at Colt Cabana. I have a very public email, coltwrestling at gmail.com. Maybe you're a promoter you want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. Go check the archives. Marty DeRosa and I did a web series for a year straight, worstpromoever.com. Head on over to my web website coldcabana.com i got a p.o box on there i love getting snail mail send me something fun and i got a facebook slash aow podcast like it upcoming this week i'm gonna be in winston-salem north carolina at wrestlecade on saturday november 29th then sunday december 7th i'm in toronto canada destinywrestling.ca saturday december 20th rahway new jersey Pro Wrestling Syndicate.com, a loaded, loaded show. RVD versus AJ Styles will main event that. But go check that out. Go check out all the lists, all the names. It's going to be a huge show to end the season and one of my favorite places to wrestle, Pro Wrestling Syndicate. Saturday, December 27th, Berwyn, Illinois, AAWrestling.com. Saturday, January 10th, I'm in Granite City, Illinois, Facebook.com slash PW. CS Wrestling. All right, that is the show for this week. I hope you dug it. I hope you stop asking me questions at shows that I see you. You now have the answer. Big thank you to you at home for listening every week. I hope you do. Thanks to CM Punk. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone. Thanks to Kid Russell and Matt Jenkins on the music. Hey, let's thank some of our great sponsors. Highspots.com. They got hundreds of full-length titles available to download, plus all the $5 wrestling titles, gear, AMA knee pads. The Freight Train documentary is out, and it is wonderful. Do some holiday shopping over at Highspots.com. And how about ProWrestlingTees.com and BarbershopWindow.com? The original alternative and independent wrestling shirt companies, both powered by OneHourTees.com. Custom t-shirts made to your liking an hour a week and whenever you need them. ProWrestlingTees.com is a huge 20% off everything. Black Friday sale, Stone Cold shirts, New Japan shirts, Bullet Club shirts. All profits go directly to the performer. No other place can really say that. How about TweakedAudio.com slash Colt? Go get yourself some earbuds. Get over 30% off and free shipping just because you listen to this show. That is it for this week. We're going to be back with your questions. Round up a little bit of everything. The Roundup Show, the Recap Show, putting it all to an end. All right, this has been the Art of Wrestling for Colt Cabana. I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Do you ever test these microphones or clean them? You test them. I'm testing them now, I suppose. How would you think I would even know how to clean a microphone. <laughs>